Probably better than just your young oh, seventh gear. Whoa, 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 what's going on, guys? We're actually live now. Right. Welcome, everyone, to the Heat Speak podcast. Sorry, speaker, I kind of I, I didn't give you a warning, man. I told you I would, but I didn't. Know. I lied to you again, man. <laughs> but yeah, guys, thank you very much for, for tuning in here for the uh, for the first episode, the pilot episode of the Heat, uh, Heat Speak podcast, where we're going to be talking about all things second. Um, as you can see, Speed Kicks, Joey Fury, Super Kuma, and Arslan Ash, who's not here because he's Pakistani and Pakistani timing. You guys already know about it. I knew he wasn't going to be here, but he'll be here in a few minutes, guys. Uh, but yes, Speed Kicks, uh, thank you very much for tuning in, for, for joining us. Joey, mm. Super Kuma, how you guys doing, man? Pretty good, yeah. Yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, Speed Kicks, how you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good, bro. Just been talking about some Tekken, you know, playing Tekken. Bro, I'm in love with this game right now, man. Oh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll definitely talk about that one, man. And, uh, Joey is uh, controversial opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Joey, how are you there, man? Okay, I just got a message from Arslan that he'll be he's stuck in traffic. He'll be he'll be in in five minutes. That means half an hour. But yeah, Joey, how are you doing, man? I'm doing well, man. Thanks for the invites. I'm excited to to hear everyone's thoughts. The game has been out like what two months now? Is that right? Um, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's been out for two months now. All right. So, um, yeah, it's, it's it's interesting. Um, you know, this game has uh, definitely. It's, it's it's popped off quite heavily and I, I think Tekken 7 it was interesting because Tekken 7 kind of um <clears throat> really had a big impact when it came out as well I feel like you know because from Tekken Tag 2 we were all Tekken Tag 2 players as well and um you we all remember how kind of you know dire that situation was at certain points you know we didn't know we were gonna even make it at Evo um and you know the, the prize pools weren't there but we, we still played it because we loved the game but then Tekken 7 came and it was like huge and Tekken 8 has been even bigger man so uh we definitely gonna go into that as you guys can see though on the uh right bottom corner we have our topics these are just general kind of topics that we're going to be talking about just so if anyone joins late you kind of know what we're what we're on about at the moment but generally what we're going to be talking about today are um Tekken 8 as an overall product uh Tekken 8 as a competitive game and then the current balance of the game as well now um it's not such a bad thing that Arsene isn't here right now because as an overall product you know it is what it is but I think what he want, might want to talk about a lot more is the balancing and the competitive nature of the game but I want actually all of your guys' opinion here on Tekken as an overall product as a game you know let's 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 not think as pro players right now let's think as as gamers and I'll start with you speakers because you're smiling you're thinking you got the you got the whole you know uh, rubbing your chin thing going on <laughs> uh, what do you think about Tekken 8 as an overall product Bro, this game is okay. Okay, so I, I this game is amazing to me, right? Because I'm not usually into like the casual game modes and stuff like that. The I played the story mode. They had the little Tekken Force like kind of thing going on in the story mode, which was sick. And then me and my my Discord, we have been like running com like really super competitive Tekken ball matches, right? 
we like developed like a Tekken Ball meta. And I don't know if there's ever been a time where I've invested this much like time in the other game modes in a Tekken game. So I think Tekken 8 as an overall product is probably the best one. Mm. Maybe the best. besides Tekken 5. Yeah. So you, you so your whole thing is about the modes, right? So mm. uh it's got Tekken Ball. You basically you have options outside of just playing the typical 1v1, and you say that that's kind of why it's more of a flesh product of what or something that you really enjoy. Right? Yeah, dude. Yeah, you're like a Tekken but you're like playing Tekken Ball. You can go to the arcade, you can go to the virtual arcade and like queue up. Like yeah. you can talk to people on, on that. There's the the whole customization thing. I'm not really big on customization, but I get to see what people come up with. So like that's always cool. And then um, you know, it's just just a bunch of stuff to do in the game. It's pretty fire. Mm, sick. Uh, Joey, what what do you think about it? Uh, you know, Tekken as an overall product. Um, you know, you've had a couple of months now to play the game. Um, what what are we thinking about this as like a as a product? You know, it's quite expensive. You know, people have been mentioning it's quite an expensive game. So, mm. uh, what do you think? Um, I'm a little bit more mixed, I think, than Speed Kicks. I mean, the just the visuals of it, the way it looks. I think it's beautiful. So beautiful to look at stages, character designs really been enjoying the music um that's just kind of a big thing for me like i mean tekken always has great music but particularly enjoying uh the music presentation in this game um where i've been a little more more mixed like as i've been playing the game more um the ranked mode has been disappointing me uh, a bit more as i've gone on like it's just uh i think a lot of us have felt like the the rank up to tekken god of destruction just kind of happened fast and it's like oh, i kind of like to keep playing but now same old it's hard to find matches at this rank um i was initially enjoying like the two out of three experience but um you're not locked in to the two out of three mm. which i would really like that <laughs> if they was like if you <laughs> abandon the set then you just lose like i think the set oriented ranked battles uh is just appealing as a concept to me and then you get into this whole situation like it's kind of a tired subject everybody's talked about the the plugging and the one and dunning and uh just the general bad manners that they i guess they've done some steps to solve like the the plugging but it still seems quite rampant from what i experienced um <clears throat> so ranked is like really important to me like as far as the experience of the game so it's been a little frustrating um i would also have liked to have seen a real matchmaking queue with tekken ball because the tekken ball is really fun yeah um i don't know why that's not a thing maybe farther down the line it'll get there i figured that would be something that should be included in the in the launch product um so a few little gripes here and there but the game is really fun overall okay cool awesome uh super kuma what are you what are you thinking man uh i mean i've been mostly staying in ranked i did the the character episode for my character which i think was fun i mean the match is not so much like it's just arcade mode with bad ai basically but you can tell uh, from the cinematics and everything they've they've it, it's nice to have some extra love for every character like every character gets their own bit you know which uh you know in pre previous tekken's you didn't really get that without the arcade mode and even the arcade mode was a bit shoddy sometimes but now we have something for everyone i didn't do the story mode i saw some of it i saw some friends play it like in discord one looks fun still have uh still been meaning to do it but it's just so easy to just turn on ranked and then uh you know, scream at the computer for um, <laughs> for four hours. <laughs> yeah, when it comes to this to this game again, like it's 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 good to hear your guys' opinion because at the end of the day, I don't really play a lot of different games. You know, I'm not like a gamer like that. I kind of just stick to Tekken, and then there'll be a couple other games I just play casually. But um, you know, you know, a lot of what I've been seeing is is mixed. You know. Uh, just like you said, Joey, like it is mixed. Some people have been super happy. Some people have been not so happy. And then there's people in in the middle. And I think that as I'm, I'm hoping at least that as as time passes on, um, like as as we get into the game a little bit more, there's going to be more stuff available for us. So, like for example, they've added the Tekken shop. I think that's that's uh, something that we should talk about as well. Like this Tekken shop, that was something that people were kind of mixed on as well. Like you know, they they don't like the fact that it's weird, man. How is it that you have people that are saying we should have legacy customs in this game, and then when they bring them in, people get pissed off. I don't know. You can't make everyone happy, man. It's a crazy people thing. People don't like paying for things. That's very bad. true. Yeah, it, yeah, it's a weird one. But again, this is something that 
I, w- I was saying for years that even like years and years ago that, you know, that we, I think, would be happy to pay for, you know, um, certain costumes. And it's not obligatory. And it's not like they're, t- they're, they're forcing you to pay for these things. But it's like, OK, the old, you know, outfits of Nina and Paul or whatever. And it's like, OK, it's, it's two dollars, four dollars, whatever. Um, and th- this is something that they haven't added before, but they started to add it in now. And I think a lot of people were saying that they wouldn't mind it so much if um, that money goes towards a good cause, like something esports related or whatever. I don't know at the end of the day where that money's going to go, but that is something that they've added into the game to make it a more complete product, which is in line with kind of, you know, 2024, I guess, and what other games are doing. Um, but is there anything anything right now speaking so i asked you because you said that you really like the game and stuff at the moment as a full as a full product but is there anything kind of from the other games you play that you kind of wish that they have in this game because one thing i will say is right now we haven't really got the tournament mode this is something that i really enjoyed uh back in Tekken 7 and i was hoping that in this game it would be a little bit more fleshed out and maybe have 32 man you know tournament brackets you can make with uh you know editing the the bracket to have first to two and first to three or double elimination whatever i mean what are you what are you thinking about um and anything, anything that you suggest, like that you want in the game. Um, um. So I played a lot of Street Fighter Six, um, and before Tekken Eight came out. And one thing I did enjoy about learning that game was during like the the quick match or casual match, whatever you, you want to call it, right? Um, even though they have first to two ranked, those in that mode you get infinite rematches, and I think that's great for like people who kind of need to learn matchups. They need to like some time to like play the game. They want to enjoy the game outside of a first two, but they don't have like other people to play with. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could just like match up and get, get like infinite rematch in the quick match. So even if you have the first two ranked, you get to go quick match, learn the game, get some experience and then go first to two ranks. I think that would be really cool. And I um, on that one. Mm. I think other yeah. than that, the other issue is like the in practice mode. I, this is okay. This is this is a real kind of a nerdy issue. When you record things in practice mode, the game forgets as soon as like you go into a game, right? I so if know. you're in if you're in ranked queue, right? Like I want to be able to queue up in ranked, set my pun. I want to do my punish training against the character. Uh, you know, I want to like practice side stepping, punishing some stuff. Get into a game, and then when I get out of the game, I would like to the recordings to still be there. I don't want to have to like set up the recording again. Mm. That's like a big issue, I think. I see. I see. Yeah. So yeah. I guess. It's, uh, that's something that's quite new as well that is new mm. actually that you can now that when when you're queuing up for playing matches or ranked it, you actually mm. are in practice mode right so you have the full options available um mm. but yeah you're right i didn't even notice that myself actually that you go back into the game and it could, and it doesn't if you have a match and go back in then it doesn't actually rec- yeah, record and keep it's, yeah. it's kind of annoying yeah, also on the yeah. record function stop asking me if i want to record yes i want to <laughs> oh, <yes>. record <laughs> i do that's why i'm doing it <laughs> Yeah, that's a little bit annoyed as well. Joey, what, uh, anything that you you kind of you know you said that you're kind of mixed on it right now. What 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 is the most important thing for you that you'd like to see added into into the game, if there's anything? Um, well, just to add on to one of those like minor nerd uh, complaints. Yeah, yeah. But when you're when you're in practice mode and you're like setting uh, multiple options, so like okay, I set this move uh like slot one, and then you go to slot two. And then it takes you all the way back up to the move list. It doesn't remember oh, where yeah. your cursor is. So annoying. <laughs> like, yeah. for, like, I wish it was just like a singular memory where the cursor was um, for like the whole loadout instead of like resetting you to the top every time. I, small thing, but I find it very annoying. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, like uh, I forgot to mention when you first came around to me, like the, the replay feature is still amazing. And I think I really need to just give that it's, it's due, like yeah. how much fun i've been having with it how cool it is that you can watch all these other players fighting and um just observe their matches and for coaching it has been valuable beyond belief Mm. uh, being able to just really like go in and explore the details of what people can be doing better and even just demonstrate right to them like you could have done this so cool so as as part of the product i i just have to give that um the highest praise so the replay feature has been great. Um, I think, like Speed was saying, being able to just infinite rematch people you run into, um, I think is really crucial. If if it's only in quick match, I think that's just fine. But um, yeah, so important to just be able to like run into an opponent and just like grind out a matchup if that's what both of you want to do without having to go through that step of like 
adding them in uh, the Tekken ID thing, which is a little bit convoluted in itself. Oh, I have to say, yeah, that, yeah, adding people, adding people um, is rough in this game. It, it's rough. Yeah, there needs to be, uh, there needs to be like a copy paste function on that Tekken ID because <laughs> <laughs> they're the shit in over. And over yeah, again. Bro. Um, I swear it's case sensitive as well, isn't it? It's kind of it, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. It's case sensitive. Yeah, yeah. But please let me delete friend requests. Oh yeah, I'm at a I'm at a hundred. It takes like five seconds to delete one. Yeah, it takes oh, so long. Mm. Oh, there should man. be like a delete know. all option, right, or something. Yeah, maybe. just yeah. Uh, just one delete all option. And In general, we make, should uh, hopefully we can search for people to add at some point. Uh, I don't know if that's like planned for a later update, but right now you have to go to the replay, use their yeah. tech and ID, search for their replays, then add them through that. Yeah, I, I just very, have people add me. Just go on the leaderboard. I'm I'm near the top of my character. <laughs> Add me. It'll be easier that way. Well, yeah, what I've what been I've like... been doing tournaments like um with reversal uh, every every Tuesday. Well, every Sunday and Tuesday we have like different tournaments that we do. And for me, as the person who's streaming the tournament, I need to like the lobbies have been very difficult for um to to find. I don't know if you've joined many online tournaments, but if you want to try and find the lobby of the person that you um that you need to go in for the stream. Like some man, it has taken sometimes up to twenty minutes for just someone to find that lobby. You know, yeah, uh, passcode yeah. or no passcode, it is so difficult to find a lobby sometimes, and that is something that I do hope gets fixed as well. Um, I do like how they've added in the um, function to be able to just be a spectator in the lobby too, because before in online tournaments it was super long because I had to like you know say no and then go back to the bottom of the queue and then blah blah blah. There's also options to do uh, sets in these lobbies too, so I have like first to five, first to seven, first to ten up to first to 10 in a lobby so they can instant rematch while there's a spectator watching. So that's been a huge, um, I mean, huge change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, There is an issue with that is that mm -hmm. if you need to change stage, so you quit out, it just forgets where you are in the set. And yes. It just restarts. Yeah, it restarts. Yeah, yeah. That, that kind yeah. of sucks. So... But again, it doesn't really matter if they keep track, you know, but that is, yeah, again, yeah. yeah I'm just, I'm just saying, cool. if, yeah. if you're finding the same person, you should probably have an option to stay in the set. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I agree. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh one thing with the with the lobbies that's that's been a little bit difficult. But yeah, le leaderboard stuff as well. Like that's that's what I've been having to do. I've had to like literally go into the leaderboard in order to find someone if I want to, if I want to add them, if add them and you know have them there. So yeah, like I think um overall I agree with every, everything you guys have said so far. It looks like Arstan's here now. He's in the he's in the call. <laughs> can you Joker? You can you hear me? Yeah, you can, can, can you do yeah. can you do the OBS ninja thing so I can add him into the you know that, yeah. He don't start. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll uh we'll, we'll get we'll get we'll get our slant added in soon. You gotta turn your camera off here though on Discord. All right. Um where was I, man? Was I so what were you talking about? What were we talking about? Um Um so Yeah, we were uh you were talking about the lobby system and um some of the, the issues that it has. Yeah. I I don't wanna say it's like a like a one step forward, two steps back, but it is kind of like one step forward, one step back. Like they fix some things and then new issues arise. Mm. Like it has been very hard to find the lobbies with the search feature. The Tekken Lounge is really nice. I think that's a very cool feature. Um, and it does add like a little bit of just like a vibe to being online. Mm -hmm. um, but there are some additional issues i see someone in the uh the chat was mentioning how you no longer have a random stage indicator in lobbies to know mm -hmm. for sure that your opponent random selected the stage um I, that was something they added like kind of later on in second seven and now it's gone yeah um with the lounge sometimes like you will get on the cab opposite the other person and then you're just like you're both on the cabinet and it's not matching you together it's like oh, what's yeah. going on I've it's just, just the two of us what's taking so long um, so there are these these little issues that I would like to see ironed out in the future. Yeah, Tekken uh, Tekken Lounge. I mean, quality of life, man. Te like, the Tekken Lounge is, is weird. So you have the yellow cabs and the pink cabs, right? The pink cabs are where you have to go in order to fight someone head to head, right? And then yeah. the yellow cabs that that apparently is for ranked and player matches, right? I haven't really even used those to be honest too much. I haven't been to the yeah, Tekken Lounge all too much actually. I mean, kind I've of never defeats the it. purpose of being in there, I find, but... No, no, but if that is, if that's the case, the yellow cabs, right? Is it that it's only that selection of players and you can play ranked with just those players? I don't no, know. Yeah, I don't no, think so. no, I don't think so. I think, I think you're just in the whole queue, like oh, okay. normal, normal yeah. ranked queue. 
What would be the benefit of going there? Is it just for the vibes or something? Because you're, vi you're vibed out. Vibe, yeah, you know, so. yeah, the arcade, you man. Show people your custom, man. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that there's, there's like, you go to the dojo, you can just go into practice mode. And you're just, it's like, why are you in this <laughs> server to be in practice <laughs> mode? I don't, that's the vibe, man. Yeah, <laughs> nice. there's, a, there's a beach outside, like, come on. Yeah, yeah. The beach. So Tekken Ball, as well. have you guys had a, much chance to play the Tekken, Tekken Ball mode? Yes, I yeah, love dude. that mode. So, so what's the yo or something? Okay. What's your what's your opinion on Tekken Ball? I mean, uh, I have you have you been playing it a lot? Are you confident that if there was a tournament, you'd be able to take it? <laughs> if, if there was a Tekken Ball tournament, I would definitely be top three. I don't know. There's some yeah, there's some dudes up. out there who are sweating, who are sweating. But you know, I might be if you if they put if they put us on the Evo stage and said Tekken Ball like a hundred a thousand man bracket, I might be top three. What's your main? Yeah. Okay, it depends on the situation. I, I'm I'm rocking Alisa. She's broken. I'm not gonna tell anyone why broken if you know you know elisa yeah it's, it's got to mm -hmm. be the thing where you throw the head at them no no okay i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna tell you i'm telling you it's it's her up back two up back. <laughs> it's her it's her up What's back, up back two power two? crush the power crush the, oh the, the, the flying one or two uh, oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah i yeah. played against luffy yeah. man you know md luffy from bro joker was watching as well mm -hmm. i was uh i played against md luffy in uh in, in uh, from saudi and that that guy is ridiculous ridiculous at Tekken Ball. Apparently he's been playing Tekken Ball more than the actual game. And yeah, he used okay. Elisa. And, well, um, okay, well, yeah. maybe maybe I won't be top three. Okay, I, <laughs> Luffy, <laughs> Luffy's kind of a he's kind of a cracked gamer. Yes. So, you know, maybe he's got me beat. I'd like to see that. Arslan, how you doing, man? Can you can you hear us? Yeah, can you hear us? Yes, we can, can hear you. you. You guys are in okay, Saudi okay. now, yeah? Yeah, I just, he just arrived in Saudi and I'm leaving tomorrow morning. So, yeah. Um, but we met and we had a dinner together and then we are here. Sorry for the delay, guys. No, it's all, it's all good, man. Joke, how you doing, bro? bro? I'm tired, you know. <laughs> I've barely slept on the plane, but just kids crying on the plane, man. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to book you a business class. Bro, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, my looks finished, bro. But it's no, good to... It's, it's, it's good to have you here anyway, Joker, because we can actually talk to you a little bit about this as well. Um, I'll ask both of you um, because the same question that I asked uh, these guys. So te Tekken as an overall game, I know we're all you know competitive players here and stuff. We'll talk about that you know next, but right now, just as a game, getting just think about huh? as a casual. What do you think about Tekken Eight as like a casual player? As a casual player. Yeah, like the game. Have you played that Tekken Ball and other stuff and customization? Think as a casual player. I think as a casual player, it's really good. There's so much content. Like, I think it's a lot of fun for casuals. I think they've made it easier for people to understand and play the game. Like, there's tutorials and stuff mm. explaining about the mechanics. I think for from a casual perspective, it's really good. But when you talk about, like, from a competitive perspective, it's a bit... It's other way around. Yeah, I agree with Joker. I think as a casual player is good because they don't want to compete in tournaments, you know. But we can, uh, but as a competitor player, is not good. It's not uh, going in the right direction. I I just against the idea of the whole heat thing. Uh, it's just like so much. It's too oppressive, I think. And then, I mean, players like me and me and others who love defensive style. I don't know how to play this game. They are forcing us to play offensive. They are forcing us to play characters who are offensive, like Azucena. I don't want to play Azucena. I don't want to play like uh, uh, Dragon. I want to play other characters like Jun, but like it's so hard to play with these characters. So this is like my take. Okay, well, well, let's let's uh, let's just get straight on to the next topic then. The next yeah, topic yeah. being <laughs> <We're already laughs> the there. next topic being Tekken Eight as a competitive game, and Arslan yeah. has got us nicely into that one. Now we've kind of transitioned over into the next topic. I told you guys, I literally told you that it's good that he's not here right now because we'll talk about the product <laughs> thing, and then as soon as he joins, he's gonna start talking about competitive. He can't help it, man. He's the four-time Evo champion, bro. It is what it is, man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Tekken 8 is a competitive game. Speaking again, you know, since you're at the top of the of the thing, I'll I'll start with you. You've heard what Arstan has said. He goes, look, this game and Joker even saying that it's like the other way around when it comes to it. Oh, big raid from you, you as well. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, he says it's the other way around, man. It's not fun. It's not the. It's not what you know. Knees having trouble. CBM's messaging me like crazy, saying, "What the hell is this?" But Speakix, talk to us, man. Mm -hmm. What do you feel about this game as a competitive game right now? As a competitive game right now, I think the balance isn't super good, right? So that's that's one thing. 
I think um, some things are a little too kind of ridiculous. Um, like like character wise, think Dragonov, think Fang, think Azucena, right? Like in a first or two, you have to deal. You have to fight that. You have to fight King. You have to kind of start guessing a little bit. Um, a little pretty bit. quickly. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah, it gets, gets pretty quick. But also, um, it's hard to say that it's immediately like bad competitively because we don't know how to play it yet. You know what I mean? Like mm. it's only been like two months, and when it comes to a new fighting game, like often. Like so, we have so we have this this thing where any in any new fighting game, offense is always going to be king first because we have yet to develop the defensive ways to stay alive, and we've like yet to figure out what we can ignore and what we don't don't have to guess into, or what we do have to guess into. I and mean, you combine that with the fact that the game has all these aggressive mechanics, um, so we right now are we're so free to offense, we're so free to just like people running in, hitting buttons. We we're guessing on everything. Um, and it feels like that's supposed to be the way that like that's what's reward- rewarding. But maybe down the line, as we start to figure out how to actually defend against this stuff in a way that makes sense, that's not going to look like Tekken 7. It's going to look probably a little bit more interactive. Um, it gets a little bit better. Um, and then, of course, there's going to be balance changes in the future and stuff like that. So that's going to be cool, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I agree. Like, you know, obviously the game's just come out, right? Mm-hmm. But don't you think that after two months, what is your opinion on the mm-hmm. way that the game is now? Let's say the Tekken World Tour is starting soon. We can mm-hmm. we can we can speculate and say that we may not know that uh, a certain situations mm-hmm. where we we might not have to guess where we do we, where we are guessing right now. We're obviously going right. to learn more. But as it yeah. is right now, w- what do you think about it as a competitive game? Apart from, as, outside as the right. balance, like we'll talk about as mechanics. Right now, I think yeah. I think I think we all. The whole world sucks at this game, and we all get punished really hard for sucking at this game. Okay. So I think that alone is a pretty okay competitive product. Okay. If you're getting punished for for, for skill issues. I see. Joey, what do we think? Mm. So I, I agree with a lot of those assessments. Like, there are going to be things that seem just, like, utterly oppressive, and there will be strategies that people formulate to kind of slow those strategies down and solve them. Um, even just when I think back on like Tekken 7, like when they when they introduced Rage Art, like it's just like every round somebody was getting hit by one. Like it just was such a difficult thing for Tekken players to adjust to like, you got to hit the brakes like when they enter Rage. Um, I think there's going to be similar things like that. Um, when it comes to just shutting down the opponent's opportunity to like enter heat or you know, whatever the the situation might be, you're going to see people become more and more adept at like applying the proper solution. At the same time, um, yeah, I, I definitely would echo the sentiment that there are some serious balance issues right now. Like if, if Tekken World Tour just goes right ahead the way the game is now, um, I would think like. I don't know how to put it. It's just not not great game balance to be running like hyper competitive tournaments with. Um, I think you're gonna just see like a high degree of volatility. Mm. Um, but as far as like kind of introduce the topic a little bit of the heat mechanic, I do have some issues with some of the heat mechanics, and that I feel like at least right now, there doesn't appear to be much counterplay possible to some things. Uh, I understand the idea, like, people are going to figure out options and counterplay things better, but there are, like, some standout situations where it's, like, you just have to hold it. Like, like, like what? Can you, can you give us an example? example? <laughs> um, so uh, the most, like, obvious example that immediately comes to my mind is just, like, Devil Jin Heat Burst. You know, he's just got this range, like, you got to stand there. Like, what are you going to do at this point? You're just going <laughs> to fly in. Like, you can't stop it. You can't contest it. Um, you just got to block it and let him get his plus frames. Um, but even just the the Heat Burst mechanic itself, I think it has a little bit too much going for it. And it's hard for me to say, like, how exactly to balance it or how it should be tweaked when I don't understand all of the implications of like if you change certain properties of it. But like my assessment of it being like very fast, armor, very long range, good tracking, plus frames on block, plus frames on hit, <laughs> extends your combos, gets you into heat. If you do find yourself too, like that you actually screwed up so badly that you're going to whiff it, you can cancel it. 
Like, it's just... And you can throw it at a range where, like, the only counterplay to it, which is, like, throwing them out of it, you can throw it out there at a range where that's not possible. Yeah, like Nina's mm -hmm. Power Crush is one of the best examples. It's a mid, safe, last on block. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah, uh, Super Kuma, I'll get, let you comment before we continue, but, like, what's, what's your take on it as a competitive game? Uh, I'm I'm more on speed side, you know. I'm uh, I'm liking it overall as a competitive game, but yeah, obviously it's the balance I've got an issue with. But that's not the that's not the subject. Why right are you now. laughing? Uh -huh. <laughs> Why is that so of course I, I like it, bro. Everyone's a kuma. It's great. Yeah, yeah. Isn't this what you wanted? <laughs> it's amazing. I, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I didn't laugh. Like <laughs> no, when you're talking, just a kuma came to my mind. I was like, okay. Of course, man. Yeah. Everyone's a kuma. It's great. Of, of course, I like it. It was made for me. Yeah. But when it comes to to the mechanics, it's like heat burst is a bit too strong. But overall, I I kind of like it. I don't mind that the that it revolves around it. Mm -hmm. Right. That that's not something that particularly bothers me because there is counterplay, and even if it is kind of free sometimes, heat burst not too bad. Right. Really? Not too bad. He burst not too like, bad. Like, like it's a bit brain dead, but I mean, it's like plus character. one, plus two is, is whatever. So, Arstad, what, what do you think? No, but, yeah, got a joke. But a joke. range and tracking of heat burst is a problem. Another mechanic mm -hmm. that no one's talked about is wall blast, bro. Wall blast is yeah, ridiculous. Watch is on the bottom stage. Why is no one talking about that? Man? That's just a mess, bro. I mean, I've barely said anything, to be fair. I might, okay. have, I might have said something. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. No, I've been talking about the, the stages uh, uh, quite a bit in my stream. I The stages are kind of a joke. I like, they're funny, you know, like on like some casual stuff, but competitively, uh, competitively, like into the stratosphere, I that, that stage is insane. There's no like... You know, previously, like when when Sage has his were first introduced in like Tekken Six, right? It was like this small part of the stage where if you get comboed, you go through the ground. So it was like a a positioning thing, right? You'd get punished for getting hit with a certain positioning. But now the wall blast is everywhere. It's behind you. It's in front of you. It's to the side of you. Like there's no avoiding it. And then the stage like is random, so you could just get randomed into arena underground versus Jack Eight, and now he's <laughs> he's wall blasting every combo. It's really a problem. Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. And someone was mentioning as well that the damage is is unscaled or like really really high for the actual blast itself, which mm -hmm. uh, it's a huge chunk of damage actually. Whenever you get, but I always laugh when I when I see it happen because it's it just always funny. adds ten. I think right, the wall blast always adds ten unscaled. Yeah, it, 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 it should probably not add damage since yeah. you know yeah. you get a launch from it. Yeah, it's probably, <laughs> it's probably best to just have it as a hazard with no extra added damage. Mm -hmm. You're going, Joker? I, think, I, think, thing, I think that would help. Another thing no one spoke about is the aerial spins. I think that shit is ridiculous as well. That has to go for every single character. Like Nina and Feng. Feng included, yeah, yeah. Dragonov. Like, there's... I understand there's they got rid of one. heat yeah. dash. Oh, no, yeah. cool. They got rid of heat dash combos because combos are too long. Mm -hmm. But with the aerial spins, combos are still long. So, like, I don't get it. I saw someone say you should not be able to do it more than once per combo which I mm. think is probably good. And then maybe not being able to do it after your tornado would be would make sense too, right? Like, mm. So but what do you think, though? Do you think that it's too much, though, speed kicks? Like, I think, for example, I'm playing, playing Kuma now. So I, mm. that's the other thing, that not every character has a good one. Not every character right. has a good uh, aerial tailspin. Um, they've introduced this thing, and actually some of them are just ridiculous. Like, Feng's is ridiculous. Mm. Nina's is pretty crazy. Kuma not, has not that every, too. Huh? Not every character has one as well, you know? Really? Yeah. Some characters yeah. don't even have one. Oh, right. they're like they, I think they all have one, but uh, there's a lot of non-usable ones. Like it's in the move list, but you're never gonna, never gonna do it. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think it's cool having unique combo mechanics on different characters, right? Like there's just some things that some characters can do that others can't in combos. But I, I really question the characters why, who why can do it. Have that? Yeah, yeah. Like why does Fang wait the the character who's known for like poking and then not supposed to do a lot of damage when he hits you, so he can make more plays, more like he has to make more plays more often. Why does he get the extra damage mechanic? I think Ben needs. <laughs> you think, of course you do. <laughs> nah, man. Um, but honestly, yeah. the thing is, I also like it because it it makes combos more dynamic. It makes them look a bit different. Like it's oh, and it's fun to same, use. Bro, it's the same shit, man. You're seeing no, but, fun to it, bro. Yeah, but if you take it out, the combos are all the same too. But like, it, if you put it in there, it looks good and it's fun to use. The problem yeah. is some of them are messed up, like Nina's one, but she does it like 12 times in the combo. Feng does up yeah. forward three, like heat dash, and then you just do up forward three like five times before you start your combo. 
Like mm. I think it's more an issue of which moves do it mm. rather than the mechanic itself. Because I think there's a few characters like I'm gonna say my character, obviously. I'm gonna say Lee. I don't think his one's broken. It's good. Like Kuma's one's good as well. Like you can but dash you and do heat backlash? burst. Backlash as as a um, as an aerial spin. I don't mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes it makes sense to me. But like, I got I, I don't like his combos because it's just up forward three plus four like twelve times to get to the wall. But <sighs> I like the backlash. Right? Those are cool. I, I, I disagree. Okay, but it's fine. I'm, I'm a boring player. Cool. I love my I love of my course, characters. Of course. Right. <laughs> yeah, I, I I like aerial spin, but there. I don't think necessarily putting a limit to it is, but like some characters' aerial spin is too strong. But I don't think that's a problem with the mechanic. I think it's just some of the I moves think, they chose. Right? Mm-hmm. I think it should be limited though, maybe to once to com- once per combo, like what Speed said. That makes sense. But overall, my opinion on the game, like in terms of balance, I think we definitely need more time with it. Like we haven't really figured out proper counterplay to certain things. We're still learning to this day. No one's mastered this game. No one's really like doing crazy stuff in this game at the moment. There's still so much to learn. We're still in early days, you know, yeah. and it's still an early version of the game, which is what everyone needs to understand. I think. I think Speed Kick mastered this game. Arslan, <laughs> <laughs> nice. um, we we actually didn't happen. get your opinion on it fully, Arslan. What is it exactly? That like you, what what do you have a problem? Because you seem to have a problem with the with the com, like the the game as a competitive game, yeah. right? What, what like the, Joker mentioned the air, the tailspin. What what is it with you specifically with heat that you don't like and other stuff? I mean, I don't like. Uh, I think both heat smash and heat burst are overpowered. Uh, in my opinion, heat burst shouldn't be like too much. I mean, on block. On on block, yeah. If you block hit by, shouldn't give you plus one. I think it should be minus. It should be minus like five or something. Or minus nine, I think. If it hits you, okay, it makes sense because it hits you, then it's plus. I think that's the first thing. And I think hit smash are also way too OP. I think uh, after there are some characters like Fang, who are after his smash, if they take too much damage and after blocking this, they are they are creating 50-50s. like which is which is busted, you know. Uh, let's say Asuka after that she does one plus two. Fang does one. Fang after blocking Fang C smash. You have to block one more mix up. So this is this is not good. This is my opinion. The the other uh, thing is as well that by the way some characters seem to have like they, we haven't talked about enhanced movements in Heat as well. Some character. What's this shit that that Feng is doing, bro, Joker? But he he does the flipping fl- uh, flip and then there's a, a force field. Bro, what is listen, that? <laughs> listen, they nerfed that. Yeah, you can. Uh, you know, people in Europe have started and, and to they, and they should and they should nerf it again. So yeah, react to the jump is, and jab. People have started power. React to the jump and jab. That's Did what I just say that right? Yeah, nice. No. Nice. So I'm gonna be the one to hear that. A <laughs> React to the jump and jab. That's oh, a funny one. Even I, did, I, even I didn't say to, that. <laughs> uh, jab you. You can do power. You can do down back threes. You can do back one plus two. Just back dash. Just back dash. <laughs> nice. Bro, 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 it's, got, it's got like this mad <laughs> range, you know, bro. Nice. You know, what before we were talking about, like top five, he thinks Fang is not in top five. No. Fang is top I didn't five. say that. I said <laughs> Fang's third. He said that. Listen, he said that. He said that. let me do a top three right now. Link's number one. Dragon of number two. Fang's number three. Fang number one. We'll get, okay. we'll get there. We'll get there. We're gonna get there. The next in the next uh, top. The next topic is gonna. We're gonna get to top fives and top threes or whatever. But yeah, enhanced moves. Uh, Speed kicks. Your character has a sweep. As a as a sweep with the with the heat as well. Like you know, enhanced moves. I'm not saying it's broken. If I'm just saying it has that. Um, and what else? Uh, um, I mean, Akuma. I think Lee has like the easy. Lee ba- basically, you know, the moves that you can already do if you can play Lee. Well, you get. Uh... Be sure you don't drop the thing you weren't. You probably weren't dropping any. Anyway. Like just frames. Yeah. Yeah, and, and Joey, you can do the moves you could already do. Yeah. But they're easier to do. Joey, what what do we think about enhanced moves in heat as well? Could we talk about heat. We talk about heat burst. I think, if you want my opinion on heat burst, I agree with Arslan. It should not be plus on block. I think that there, there is very little counterplay to it because I've seen people literally do lows and then the low freezes when the heat burst animation comes on and the heat burst wins. Even like the, the low is about to hit, you know? Yeah, that, that's what that's actually what I wanted to say before, you know, I, I got told, yeah, of course you like the game. It's you, everyone's Akuma. Like, heat burst, some of them sway back for no reason. Which, like I said, I don't mind burst on its own, but none of them should just backswing and just evade. Like you're yeah. supposed to power crush through it and be able to be thrown, be able to be counter hit. 
There is what? stuff you you're supposed to be able to do, but and some ca building. some characters you can't. Wait, who's the person that you're talking about? There's there's a couple. I think Wong's one does it a bit. Like I can't remember the exact ones. But there's a few. They just backswing as they do it, and they just evade your the proper counterplay. Yo, speakers, just, why aren't you talking about work. your backswinging heat burst, man? What? What? I why are you talking about this? Wait, wait, listen. I don't. I, I talk about everything. Backswing. Heat burst, like bro. <laughs> backswing. <laughs> Look, I didn't know. I didn't listen. If he felt that, I've I've never seen that happen. But I do know, like all he, all heat bursts aren't built uh, equally, right? Because really? I put, yeah, 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 they're not. Some of them have more range. Some of them are have higher hitboxes, right? So I learned this by playing Ling Xiaoyu because Ling Xiaoyu can AOP down some hit, heat bursts, but not others. And then I realized that mm. in certain situations, there are ranges where you can make a heat burst whip on one character, but not others. Like Jin's heat burst probably has like the most range I've seen. I haven't tested it, um, but it's it's really long. And I know there's like Asuka, there are situations um, after her heat burst, when people heat burst back, you can can cans the heat burst, but not every character allows that. So Super Kuma is probably right. Some characters like hurt boxes are probably pulled back more when they activate. Um, it's, it's, they, should, they should be at least built equally, I think. I feel like that mechanic should not have so many variables to it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Joey, uh, heat burst. Okay, uh, heat burst. Um, so... Yeah, I was saying about, like, in trying to counterplay them, it's very difficult because they can commit to it from such far ranges. So my mind was thinking of the idea, like, the range should be limited so that if you're going to use it, you should have to, like, engage at the range where the opponent can, like, actually counterplay you. Like, they can mm -hmm. actually potentially throw you out of it. But then you're messing with so much of the combos because it's used in so many instances like for its long range for combo conversions. So doing that to um, kind of change the way you have to place it in like in the neutral and in like kind of scraps up close, it would have the side effect of shaking up the whole combo game, which is why I was saying it's hard to decide like how you should balance things because there can be consequences in, in foreseen places and sometimes in unforeseen places as well. But um, maybe a way to balance it that would not risk so many unforeseen consequences, like when you activate heat bursts, I think you give up, is it 25% of like your heat gauge? Yeah. Um, maybe that's not a severe enough tax. Like maybe you should be giving up half of your heat gauge for using such a strong tool to like break the opponent's momentum or get your offense going, get into heat manually. Maybe mm -hmm. you should pay a bigger price than mm -hmm. a quarter. Um, those are just some of my thoughts on it right now. Okay, do you guys agree with what Arstan said about um, about it being minus 9? I actually do think that's a good thing because the fact that it gives you plus frames on hit and on block and you have access to this steroided version of your character with plus frames um, and, you know, t turn stealing is what I, t what I talk about a lot when it comes to Tekken Nick compared to other Tekkens. I feel like it's a lot easier to do that. It's one, one mm -hmm. thing I've noticed that, you know, being able to steal your turn, especially using the heat burst, heat burst is probably the strongest thing in the game right now, in my opinion, just because of your mm -hmm. ability to be able to shut down uh, your... We talk about this game being super offensive. Actually, Heat burst is one of the best defensive tools. It can it can interrupt strings. Yeah. You can you yeah. can stop your opponent from going crazy on you. And I don't mind that at all. I don't mind that there's even if there's pushback, but I don't think that it should be plus on block. Is anyone here in disagreement about that? It, or anyone uh, does everyone agree here that maybe it should be like minus on on block at least? Or, or... Uh, I'm go I'm gonna disagree. Okay, go on. Like, the Why? thing is, it's you're sup you're but supposed to have this strong. Burst. I don't know. Like, <laughs> don't do the backswing. I mean, Akuma you, disagrees. Yeah, Akuma disagrees. Heat burst is like every round you have one option of doing this, and yes. it's free. It's not like uh, yes, you get you one. You don't have to build it, but like it shouldn't be plus. I mean, it should be I mean, minus. Yeah, and and then I give my opinion, and then the others yeah. give their opinion, and that's how that works. What's your opinion? That's fine. Okay. Like I don't mind that. Like if it was more than plus one, I'd I'd be you know I wouldn't be okay with it. But just the way it is now, you're supposed to have something to break this crazy offense. The whole game is, oh, there's too much offense, too much offense. Like mm -hmm. you said, there's one of the best defensive tools. They give one to everyone. Mm -hmm. And then when you have the thing to break the offense, people are happy. Well, so that's that's the thing, right? It's because you feel you almost feel like kind of uh, robbed out of the your turn that you earned, right? Like there's times where someone can just activate, like they're they're at a negative like position and they're at disadvantage and they're on defense. 
and they can like they're playing Jin Kazama and they heat hit the heat burst. And if you attack into it, obviously it makes sense. Okay, they got you. Um, but if you block it, it doesn't matter. Like he he automatically gets momentum back. And he's playing Jin Kazama. So when you block a heat burst from Jin Kazama, and you're at that range where he has the heat smash where he can do it, where he can catch you if you try to heat burst back. And you really don't want to press any button because he's Jin Kazama. He's got the electric, the four four, the four four, the four four two. Like it, it's almost like he didn't make a read. He just assumed, okay, well, I'm in a bad spot. I lost Dutro this one time. I don't know how I lost Dutro. I'm playing Jin. I'm on defense. I'm going to screw it. I'm going to hit the heat burst. I'm going to keep it going. Like, that situation kind of sucks. He shouldn't, like, get earn, like, earn any kind of advantage for doing almost nothing. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. And plus, like, it could be a legit frame trap into a heat smash <laughs> because Jack, the amount of times <laughs> I've played against some guy and I've done heat burst, and I'm like, this guy's going to press. <laughs> No, he, he smash and you're dead, you know? <laughs> and then it goes to a wall yeah. blast and he's in the air and now 80% gone because you decided to press on minus one. Um, yeah, I mean, um, Super Kuma says that it should be plus. I think that maybe it should be minus, maybe not minus nine, but at least mm -hmm. it shouldn't be giving you not um, the, the, the turn steal, but also the momentum. That's the issue, right? Mm -hmm. It gives you momentum on block, dude. Like, if you get hit mm -hmm. by it, fair enough, man. Plus two, whatever. But um, uh, Joey, do you agree with that? Do you think that that's a fair assessment? So, uh, as... Uh speed kicks was sort of setting out that example it was making me start thinking like what if we did shorten the range on this thing and i was starting to imagine just like how horrible <laughs> it already feels so horrible playing defense in this game sometimes like certain characters like coming at me and like i can't <laughs> just commit to the heat burst as like a keep out thing it could feel really bad so i'm kind of mm -hmm. questioning that idea at all <laughs> like it <laughs> maybe should have range just in the interest of being able to push back on some of the really crazy offense that exists in this game. Mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe a more appropriate thing would just be um, not getting advantage on block anymore. I mean, I don't think the plus one is too crazy, but it advantage is advantage. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I think being negative on block could be a nice way to, to tweak it slightly without uh, really messing with it too much. It's just no longer like, you know, gonna be oppressive on block. I would be down for that. I think that's cool. fine. Yeah. Uh Joker. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to just go on, go on. bounce back on that. Yeah, yeah. Like if if it's minus but like not a lot, like minus one on the other yeah, hand. A little bit. That would be fine. Because the point of it is to stop offense, right? Because if it was minus nine, right, you go for it and then nothing happened. Not only are you in heat, so you're starting to lose your heat, you're at minus nine and you're in the worst spot that you were already. But what if but if it's still plus on hit, then that means that if you at least time it well with as a defensive option, then you get rewarded for timing it as a defensive option. But it's not mm -hmm. it. You should you should get punished for not. I don't think you should it, like, get punished that it, hard. Accu accurately using it defensively, I think, and you're not getting like that. So you shouldn't like you know you're not getting free damage on you. It's just you're still on defense now. Maybe not minus. Maybe not minus nine. Yeah, but that's negative. what I'm saying. I don't think you should be punished that hard. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, it, like min minus one. I I could agree with, with, with that. Right? Back. With yeah, minus, 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 minus three, four is is all right. Yeah, no, yeah, minus yeah. nine is too, is too much. Yeah, yeah, minus and three, minus four, with less pushback. Pushback, and then the time freeze as well. I think there there should be more window if you wanna grab him. Like when they're activating heat heat burst, you could grab him. You know, hmm. or maybe yeah. low. Or you could do a low. They they will like more window of doing this. You know, instead there's yeah. a small the, window. The counterplay should be more consistent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Um, I feel like yeah. there's been many times where I have a read. I know this person's going to do the heat burst. I dash in yep. to go for a lower throw, and they do the heat burst, the heat burst, and then the heat burst beats my throw or low attempt. And I sometimes exactly. have, uh, yeah, I have lows like that at twelve frames sometimes, and it still doesn't win. You know, Joker, uh, do you agree with uh, what Arslan's saying here? Are you? Uh, would you be happy with kind of push a little bit pushback minus four, minus five on on the heat burst on block and a, a bit of plus frames on hit? What do you think, man, about heat burst? Yeah, I agree with that as well. I think it should still be a defensive option because of how aggressive the game is. Like, we still need defensive options. Like what Joey said, I think playing defense in this game isn't as rewarding as it used to be. So I think having heat burst as it is, maybe a few tweaks here and there, I think it's 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 fine as a defensive option. Okay, one big topic. Oh, we've spoke about heat a little bit. Let's move on to the next topic. Well, next uh, in this... We're going to talk about chip damage. Chip damage yeah, yeah, is something yeah, yeah. new to uh, to Tekken 8, of course, if you guys have been around since before. I know there's a lot of new players in Tekken, in Tekken now that I've just started in Tekken 8, but before there was no such thing as chip damage really outside of a few rage drives that did a bit of chip and stuff. But um, mm. what do we think generally about 
chip damage. Uh, again, actually, this time I'll start with you, um, Super Kuma. What do we think of chip damage? Uh, I mean, again, I like the mechanic. It's just an issue of some characters have too much access to it. But I like the fact that it makes you come out your shell. I like the recoverable health mechanic is what I like about the chip, right? Is that you can get back that health that was chipped away. Now, there's a couple characters that can delete all of your chip very easily. That I'm not too okay with. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, chip as a whole, I, I like I, it brings something to the game. And it allows for you to be in that, uh, oh shit, I'm on one pixel kind of tense situation. And your health regens, and you get to feel that adrenaline again, but in the same round. Mm -hmm. So it makes it can make for a more exciting game, I think. But again, it needs to on some characters it needs to be toned down, and the ability to delete it is a bit weird that it's locked just on three characters. Yeah, chip damage was added in. I feel like as a way to stop people being uh, uh, too defensive again. <clears throat> you hold back and you're getting chipped and chipped. I mean, eventually you have to do something, right? You can't just block all day. Joey, um, what do we think of, of of chip damage, the concept of it, and how it's implemented in Tekken Eight? Uh, I think what Super Akuma said is a very reasonable take. Um, yeah, the like the old school Tekken player in me wants to to be sort of resistant to it, like what is this idea of being punished for blocking you know this is absurd <laughs> like there's this part of me that wants to think that way but um there are times when i'm playing where it does feel interesting like to be able to to chip somebody down and recover the health back like super was saying there's kind of like an excitement and an adrenaline to it to being like close to death and then you can heal your way out of that situation <laughs> um so i would say probably the most reasonable take is it's okay. Like, I don't think it's going anywhere. We're going to have chip in this game, but it needs to be refined. There's clearly instances where moves are just doing way too much. The chip damage is stacking up so fast, and you're really just, like, beating the hell out of players for blocking, which, like I said, I do have some kind of revulsion to that idea deep down in some ways. <laughs> so I think it's just a bit too much. We need to refine um, just how much chip is happening. I think if you just kind of like start going through the roster, like what are this character's chip options, reveals itself very quickly. Like why is that doing like 19 chip damage like from one shot? <laughs> yeah. There are instances like that that clearly the balance team uh, could and I think should refine. Yeah, okay. Uh, speed kicks, what, what do we think about chip? Um, so I honestly don't care too much about chip either way. If it's there, if it's not, I think it changes the game style a bit. It's pretty fun to have that bit of like gray health management thing you have to do when it comes to Tekken. Like I think adding resource management in, in Tekken in any kind of capacity is pretty fun because now I'm there are situations where I'm low on HP, like, but I have a lot of gray health and I have heat. So I'm like, let me do my heat burst, which is low counterplay. I get my, I get another turn back and I get some extra chip or some extra gray health. And I'm like just doing moves just to get my great health back. That is pretty. That is really fun. Um, as far as aggressive, like using it aggressively, I've been abusing it. I feel like it's a little bit over to not so much the mechanic, like the chip damage itself. I don't think chip damage is a problem, but the moves that do chip damage, mm -hmm. I'm not sure why my move is plus on block and does chip damage. Mm -hmm. I've always wondered that. Right? Why is it that? I'm not only punishing them for blocking by getting my turn, getting getting into an advantage situation, but I'm also beating like making them lose health they're losing health for blocking and they have to fight back from minus five if i'm playing like i was just saying if i'm playing I'll like dragon or something right yeah, like yeah, yeah. and then you're just running two three running three two over and over and it's like hey you're blocking this and you can't fight back because you're negative but you're also losing health so fight back um <laughs> <laughs> you know i i think if i think if chip damage moves at least reset you back to neutral it would make a lot more sense right so like yeah you didn't you didn't get a read on the guy's defense you didn't hit him too much but um you made your play for getting in by chipping his health bar a bit, and now you have to make another play. If he's if he refuses to interact with you, then you just win neutral again, and you get more you get to chip him again. But making punishing someone for refusing to interact at minus five with another minus five move and like also losing health is insane to me. Yeah, uh, uh, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Arslan uh, and Joka, you heard them. I mean. They, they said, I mean, I agree with everything that's been said pretty much. You know, I think chip damage is a bit, bit crazy right now. And especially coming from like plus on block moves, like the Azure Center running 3-2 and this. Uh, what do you guys think of chip damage? And what, maybe if there was any changes that you would suggest, what would you change about chip damage having played the game now for a while? 
Yeah, I definitely think uh, some uh, some characters uh-huh. need to be balanced. <laughs> some characters are just insane, like plus frames on top of chip damage. Bro, you got Biz shitting out electrics into heat smash where you have to defend and block again. You've got Nina with her guns, like it's just it's crazy, man. Like some characters definitely need to be toned down for sure. Like we have to be honest here. <laughs> Why are you laughing so much? <laughs> <laughs> go on, go on. <laughs> I, I feel I agree with I think uh, Joe Fury. Uh, I think chip damage should exist because there are moves like uh, running three, running three to Azucena. I think that move is stupid. Oh. But uh, let's say Lars running three or Kazumi is running two. These moves are very hard to land. You know, it's not like when you are fighting in a tournaments and there are a lot of counter options. Uh, let, let's say in Tekken 7, we used to have Neutral 4, used to have Power Crush and other stuff. So these moves are so hard to land on your opponent, even to block, you know. And some of them, they don't give plus frames. And now, because they take some heat, uh, you know, they take some chip, chip, uh, chip damage. So I think now it's okay to have chip damage in this game, even if uh, when you are landing big moves. But it's too much. Like, I think the problem is the moves. The problem is not the chip damage. Chip damage should be reduced. But... Running three to of Azusina is broken. Uh, far, far far one plus running running one Nina, running move Nina is okay because that. Oh. So that move should take more chip damage. That move should take chip damage. Um, but it should be reduced. I think this is my take on this. Okay. Um, are we all in agreement with that? I think you guys all kind of said the same thing, right? Like you just think yeah, it should be maybe yeah. reduced a little bit. However, I will say this though about chip damage. It seems like the concept from the beginning was always that heavy moves would be doing chip damage. Things like slash kicks, these things that do give you plus on block. So speakers, I'll go back to you because you said mm-hmm. that this doesn't seem, uh, it doesn't seem like it, it makes sense to have mm-hmm. a move which gives you pressure, gives you momentum and g- takes a, um, a chip away from your opponent. And that might be, this might actually be one of the things that, I, uh, you know, top players are hating the most actually you know like mm-hmm. you know someone like Ni, who is like Arsan mentioned this game isn't really designed for someone like who plays that kind of defensive style he will block all day and he's the type of player that's always been like come test my defense but if he's like let's say for example the Azusen situation speed you have running mm-hmm. three two running three two running three two Ni would 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 be happy to block those in certain situations maybe try and make a sidestep move on it but um in the clip that we mm-hmm. saw that was, you know, this famous clip that was on Twitter where he blocked uh, a bunch of them and then yeah. ended up. Um, mm-hmm. you could, eventually, you have to engage. You have to do something because you're taking damage. And it's a considerable amount of damage too. No, right. Let's say yep. it was Tekken 7 and you weren't taking chip damage from that running 3-2. Well, he'll just block and then he'll wait for him to just go for a down back four, then lose his turn, right? Or, you know, mm-hmm. there's no... As the hasn't got a sweep or anything unless she goes right. into stance. So, uh, you know, what, what would you do? I mean, th- uh, to... to to mitigate that and 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 stop that from being the situation because I don't think they're gonna move away from heavy plus on block moves doing chip. Do you just reduce the chip mm-hmm. or do you just or or do you just change the move that do chip? I think I think I think I really think you change the move that do, that do chip right because let's say like you said down back four or if you did down back four you get your damage you end your turn that's that's perfectly okay because the down back four still has like position you're still in a position to play the game from after that right yeah I think if someone I think. We've already we've already understood running moves to be aggressive moves already. We've already understood like like when we were fighting Dragonov and Tekken Tekken Seven, right? When when Dragonov was really good, the running two, um, you're at a disadvantage position the whole time. The clock is ticking. You have to you have to interact. So running moves already force you to kind of have to play from a bad spot. Um, adding chip damage onto that is kind of insane. When you can add moves, you have to give the chip to other moves. Now you do the running move and let's say into a chip move, and the chip move. You know, it's minus one or minus two on block. That's fine. I think that's I think that's way uh, smarter than you know allowing people to do this move where literally the smart option to do after blocking a running move is block. But now the smart option gets killed by another running move that then you know chips you down and then puts you back in that exact same situation over and over and over. It makes no sense. So you're saying um, get rid of yeah. uh, moves which are plus on block, which do yeah. uh, chip yes. damage. I, I, I can agree yeah. with that. The thing is, if you look at Kuma, for example, he deals mm-hmm. a lot of chip damage. I've been playing him recently. Back one plus mm-hmm. two, which is his new homing move, is minus eight if you stay standing, I think. And mm-hmm. it, uh, it's, it does a ton of, ton of chip damage. But again, it's minus eight. His one right. two that you can duck now, this this new uh, one two that he has, um, that again, I think it's minus five or something. And then it does chip damage. And then you've got the back uh, forward back two, the big, you know, over overhand launcher, clownic launcher. Mm-hmm. And that's minus as well, I think. Um, 
and does chip damage. So it, it does, but then, yeah, it doesn't, those are the most considerable chip damage moves that he has. But mm. then again, like his running one plus two headbutt probably does a bit of chip damage as well. So are you, are right. we all in agreement here that maybe plus on block moves should not be uh, doing much chip damage? Uh, Joey, what do you think? Do you th and Super Kuma, do you think that this is the, the situation, or, or are you are you are you are you happy with these big plus on block moves doing doing chip? Uh, well about that, like I. F I think Azusena's one is a is a specific, very specific example because that move's just like dumb on its own, right? But it's just visually, it doesn't make a lot of sense for a lot of these for a lot of moves to do chip unless they're big moves. Why would something hurt your health bar as you're blocking it if it's just like a small thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's a there's a few good examples on Kuma, but. I can't think of many examples in the game of moves that are like, oh, that should probably do chip, and uh, and it's my it's a move that's minus, right? It makes visual sense for a big move to do that. I think I guess. Well, okay, okay, so I, okay, so when we think about like Jin, right, like the electric and the demon pod, they're both doing chip, right? Judge, yeah. So, okay. I'm thinking demon, demon, like demon pod, demon pod doing chip makes a lot of sense, right? I like that, like that. I think that makes sense. Yeah. That makes right. sense. Yeah. Um, I think, but it does. I think running. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so if we if, if we were moving from the running three, we still have moves like that, right? We have moves like Demon Paws. We have moves like I don't know, like 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 you said, Kuma's was it back one plus two? That is the input. Yeah, yeah I think that's mm -hmm. fine. Um, Huarang has too many chip moves. I think. <laughs> I think. <laughs> it's I, like I, on no, no, so I'm I'm just saying I just disagree. I think uh, running move should be should take chip damage. Because I think it takes effort to do that. It's not like you are just pressing one, two of Kuma, you know. Running mm -hmm. two, running two should take chip damage. Like running move, let's say if Nina, uh, it's very linear, and then you have to take a very, you have to have a very good read to do that, you know. Mm -hmm. But other moves like Kuma, even it's minus, it shouldn't take too much chip damage, you know. Mm -hmm. I think the running move of Azucena is the problem. Is the problem not lies in chip damage? Is Azucena is very good tracking. Even though it takes effort to land, it's not like you're just pressing. You have to do, you have to make a right read because the tracking is super, it's very good. That's why you have to block it. Yeah, Let's say if it's Lars, I'm, I'm you are doing Lars running three, you can easily take side stuff. But it should take chip, chip damage, you know. It's, uh, you you are just doing, putting too much effort. Not too much, like a little bit effort on blocking your opponent running three moves. I think it shouldn't be like, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't, it should be take more, it should take more chip damage, I think, running moves. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe yeah. by a, more of a case by case basis then, because the other center running move. Yeah. And I think to me, dragon off running too also doesn't probably it's, does too much a little bit. But um, no, that makes that makes sense. Mm. I think it makes it taking yeah. on a more case by case basis and addressing the specific moves that do chip. Yeah. yeah. Anything else we want to say about mean, about chip damage, uh, Arslan or Joey? Anyone? I like. I mean, in case of in Tekken Seven, uh, I used to play with Kuma. And I used to do running one plus two of Kuma. It's so hard, you know. You can take side step, you can interrupt that move of Kuma. And I'm talking about beers. But now in Tekken eight is good because you are, when you are doing running one plus two of Kuma, even it's plus on block, the the these moves taking chip damage, which is really good. But chip damage, I think, shouldn't take too much of health. It should take just small amount of health. Even Azucena case, I I believe that's gonna the move gonna get nerfed for sure in the future. But that move should take chip damage. If, they, if you just remove the chip damage overall, mm -hmm. I would just block all day, you know, running through to running through to running through, and then I block down back four and just punish him. It, it's no use, you know. Mm -hmm. But like that move should be less, uh, that should be more linear, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It should be more linear. And I think since we're talking about wild running moves, I think it should go back to how they were in Tekken 7. It shouldn't be so easy to execute as it is now. <laughs> yeah. I think that yeah. alone would fix so many problems, honestly. Yeah. And it fixed so many characters in terms of balance, like Dragonov, as you've seen. Uh, yeah. But like Arslan said, I think tracking needs to go yeah, tracking off watering through too. I think the chip damage is fine on certain moves, but again, it depends on the move we're talking about, you know? Yeah, yeah I think that's the yeah. where the problem lies. It's the moves, yeah. I think, not the chip damage. I yeah. Think. I think yeah, with yeah. with Azusena, I'm gonna we're gonna have a like we're gonna talk about that character. Like literally in the next the next section, we're gonna talk about Azusena because I want to. I have a lot that I want to say, but is there anything we want to say about chip damage before we move on to the next thing, Joey? Um, yeah. So, uh, I th I think like we already said, you know, evaluating on like a case by case basis of what moves are like chipping too much, and I I think I agree with what Arslan said that uh, 
I was just saying, while running 3-2, it probably should be, like, a relatively good chip damage move. It's just all the other properties that are making it this too much, too much to pair all those things together. Um, that said, like, there's clearly certain characters that they're designed to, like, revolve around the chip damage. Um, I think Kuma is a good example. Like, they they want that to be how the character gets damage mm. um, in the absence of having, like, strong low attacks. It's, like, the reason that they made Downback 2 launch punishable um, is that you're basically supposed to get your damage when you're playing Akuma by by chipping the hell out of them and using lows like the, the low salmon swipe. Like, even if they block it, you still take chip. Mm. So there are certain characters that um, it would be really devastating to them if you nerf the chip too heavily. Uh, mm -hmm. Raven seems to revolve around it quite heavily, but I, I think Raven's chip damage is too strong, personally. Mm -hmm. Um... So that's just one other thing to, to consider, I guess, that certain characters have been designed around that mechanic itself. Oh, you know, it appears. You, you know what my issue with the plus frames and chip damage comes from? It's the heat dash. I, I don't I don't like heat dash chip damage. Chip into where, plus frames. Yeah. yeah, because you because you you get you activate you activate heat, you're getting enhanced chip damage. You're doing your running moves. You're doing your plus your, your chip damage moves. And then on your way out, you heat dash. You, you do a move into Heat Dash, which does a guaranteed amount of chip, even if they're in rage. So you, it's, a, it's a really easy way to put someone at, like, like kill range. One pixel. Like, like, one hit. Yeah, one pixel. I think that and situation then... is just so boring to watch in tournament. Sorry to interrupt. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to the wall, and then you're forced to guess. Even yeah. when I do that right after shoulder, I feel bad because it's just not fun. Yeah, wall crush, yeah. Wall crush off the Heat Dash. Uh... Oh yeah, wall crush off the heat dash. Yeah. That's what you meant. Oh, that's yeah, I hate yeah, that. yeah. yeah. Wall, wall, I, cr wall crush heat dash with the chip damage on top of I, it. Is I too died in tournament because of that. I, I thought I like it was a side wall. I didn't think I was gonna get wall crushed. I tried to low parry. Mm -hmm. It wall crushed, and you don't have the frames to low parry. And I died mm -hmm. on that. That's yeah, what I it's, it's what like Janva said. It's like plus eighteen oh. if you have the wall. Mm -hmm. One it's, thing it's that more, I've seen, I think. <laughs> one thing I've seen so often if you've watched Lars or played Lars. It's the G clef into the heat dash, and the uh, the last hit of that G clef does a shit ton of <laughs> chip damage, right? And it will always put the opponent in sense. Like, let's say the opponent has rage and they're almost dead. That one, that big chunk of damage from the G clef, a ten frame string that you have to hold, mm -hmm. right? Into mm -hmm. heat dash, into plus five or plus eighteen if it's the if the wall's there, um, and then yeah, one pixel and you're dead. Like, like Joker said, it is a little bit just like, come on, it's it's a bit too free, if you know what mm -hmm. I mean, like. Heat. Well, we've already spoke about heat a bit, but like I feel like that that chip damage from from the heat is a uh, is a bit crazy, man. I mean, I, I, as a as a viewer though, is it is it gonna be fun? That's what Joker's saying. Joker's saying that it, it it's not it's not even fun to watch and some not even fun to do sometimes. It just feels too too free, too easy. Do you guys mm. think that it's gonna is something that could just make things too boring, like to watch as as esports second world tour around the corner and stuff? People are like ah, just every single time one 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 heat dash mix up time. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I feel that as Dragon up already, right? Just what around up one two one, like you chip damage, you you run your chip damage off of the heat, then one two one power like heat dash, and they're almost dead, like one hit. That is that's so boring already, bro. I think it's gonna be hype for like one month when like the cracked players just blo they block the mix up and like everyone goes crazy and then who is cracked there? Like the the good players like you and everyone else. But yeah, I think it'll be hype for like a month or two and then it'll just get boring again. Joey, you... I, I think this is like neatly transitioning us to the, the last topic, which is like the game balance. But we've identified this idea of like fast damaging, um, well, fast damaging on hit moves that also <laughs> chip mm -hmm. and get <laughs> you plus frames afterward. Mm -hmm. So like you just think about some of these sequences that are possible with the characters who like embody that idea like fast high damage on hit uh heavy chip damage on block into plus frames so like the sequences that are possible with like dragonov where you're just like okay i'm in heat running two you've got chipped running two get chipped again down back three plus four like now i've just done like 50 damage <laughs> and you block two <laughs> of the moves and now i'm gonna go right into my heat smash which is gonna frame trap you after the low yeah. And it's gonna bomb, 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 chip you some more, and now I've got an unbreakable tackle. I've got more frame traps, like absolutely brain dead sequence. Um, and there's, yeah, I mean, Dragon Ops is ridiculous. That'll bring us into the last topic, but yeah, I, it's I why these characters are so before. ridiculous. Yeah, mm -hmm. go on, go on, go on. 
Yeah, I, I just want to talk about heat smashes the wall splat. Okay. The heat smashes <laughs> are like are already good, right? They're a huge chunk of damage. Like if you get wall splat by Leo, you you just die, right? <laughs> like it's 110 damage with just if she if you get hit by a heat smash at the wall, mm. right? Mm-hmm. Like some heat smashes because like heat smash on on block is messed up, but heat smash on hit for a lot of them is not okay. Like bro, some of them, bro, yep. Ling gets heat smash on hit, and you're in the fifty fifty like you are on block. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, characters like uh, Dragonov and Jack get the wall crush mechanics from mid screen. Someone did it bro, on the. Uh, yeah. uh, and Jin did from the other side of the stage as well, bro. It's crazy. <laughs> At least those ones are meant to wall, to to wall splat. It lo- it looks better. Dragonov just sends you flying, but he sends you flying so far that it activates mm-hmm. wall crush. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think it's a wall splat like from far away. Yeah, I should. It, no, the the was I think the wall splatting after a heat smash is is way too much. Like, yeah, maybe I'm just salty because I, I got a shitty heat smash with Lee, but like I mean, some of them just it's too much. Yeah, and the way they interact with stage I, interactables. I think one know, thing we are not yeah. talking about is like low heat smashes. These are also really like overpowered in case of Claudio. Is there's a wall which is like breakable? Like you have to block mm-hmm. down one two. And then let's say pole. It should be like punish launchable. Like if you are just make them all launch pole, punishable. Yeah, yeah, make them all. Launch and I don't think they should like break the wall or the balcony. Exactly. Stuff, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's also they can they can create blast. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is like cloud is minus fourteen. Pole is less than minus fourteen. It's still minus twelve. Minus twelve. Twelve. Okay. Okay. See, like why? And then he has that fish, which is my, which is almost safe. Like these moves are like. I lost a ball player, but still, have, <laughs> <laughs> this thing like I'm not acceptable. <laughs> but I, I just want to say that Joey made a really good point. For example, we talk about how we can make system changes uh, across the board. But mm-hmm. for example, Kuma, you know, like if you change the way the chip damage works, well, he loses a significant portion of his game, right? Because he relies on chip damage, and and the the takeaway from uh, from him was that like his, his lows weren't so great, you know, down back two was nerfed. They clearly want you to be using these new moves like back one plus two in order to, you know, chip down your opponent. That's the way he's supposed to be played, right? Um, whereas what about, I mean, I feel like they've tried to make every character in this game unique, right? In some in some way with their play style. Jun Kazama is, a, is still to this day, I feel like one of the most unique characters in the game in terms of that, the way she plays. Um, you know, changing how um, heat smashes work, changing how chip damage works. This is something that's going to have a direct effect on that specific character um, and maybe other characters in the game as well because it's not not every character isn't built the same now. They, ha- they mm. have different ways to net damage, right? So it's going to be difficult to make big, large system changes, especially at this point, um, without really switching up the, the the balance of the game, you know, especially because some characters uh, rely on these mechanics to to basically win, right? So mm-hmm. I think it's, it's, it's definitely, I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting topic, like the chip damage and stuff and heat smashes, but it's it's a different, like, like Jun's heat smashes, I, it could be the best in the game, <laughs> like, to be honest. It, mm-hmm. With the amount of- uh, It's one of. Yeah. It's one of the best. I don't know if it is the best, but it's, it's up there, man, because again, 13 frame, you can use it as a block punish, it's a projectile, it gives it tons of, it's really damaging, it wall splats, it gives you a ton of your health back as well. So sometimes yeah, I'll I've, just I've, just do I've it seen for a new reason. meta, yeah. Just like they're on low health, they do heat burst, heat smash, just to re. They're gonna die. They just get thirty health back or whatever it is, yeah. and then they can play the game again. Like I've seen that way yeah. too much. They're not even trying to hit you. They're just trying to heal. Yeah. So I feel like it's it's difficult to um to to balance the game. But anyway, we yeah, chip damage. Um, are, are we all in agreement that maybe it should be? reduced i mean it's a difficult one isn't it because everyone's kind of yeah. said something different it's a difficult one um it, what would you what do you do to chip damage do you do you change what moves chip or do you do you just reduce how much it, how much chip is done in general like i don't know honestly i don't yeah, know no, i think i, I was think... saying case by case basis it's a, yeah. in a lot of instances it's fine in a lot of instances it's not but yeah. it's i don't think the mechanic is to blame for that yeah yeah I'm, I, like, I like the mechanic a bit i just the moves some moves probably shouldn't be doing chip the chip that they do. Uh, and no plus frames as well, please. Yeah. No plus frames as well, sorry? Like, m- moves that chip damage, I think they shouldn't have too much plus frames. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it should be either chip damage or plus frames, uh, you know, yeah, it should yeah. be both. And remove it off the heat dash, man. Mm. Yeah, get rid of heat dash. 
Or not, they, not get rid of it, but get rid of Heat Dash Chip for sure, right? Like, mm, interesting. Okay, so get rid of it from Heat Dash and 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 keep it confined to, to moves that do not give you plus frames because you shouldn't be in a situation where you're uh, where you're minus and getting dealt damage. That that seems fair to me. Uh, I want to show you guys a tweet that was made by Ni nee recently. The tweet was counter grab is okay, but homing grab. Whose idea was it? This is not what makes the game fun. Just annoying. <laughs> so, what do we think it about was, grabs, guys? Grabs. Arsenal, I'll let you go first. Go on. I think it was Mark Man's idea because he plays King. <laughs> 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 so, yeah. I mean, okay, so, that was a joke. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Maybe. Uh, but I think I'm okay. I, I'm fine. I think I want taken six kind of grabs, like, where it's hard to break those grabs, but shouldn't be homing. I agree with this. Like, it's yeah. grab should be, uh, you know, hard to break even with king. But like, it shouldn't be homing. This is what I what I think. Mm, okay. No homing grab, but um, he, he says count. And then you will not be able to able to break one or two grab with the same button. I think you should be, you know, it's, it should be like before where you has to guess one or two or one plus two grab, and don't make it homing. This is what I, what I feel like should be. So get yeah. rid of homing and, and make it harder to break as well. Joker, what do you think about grabs right now? Homing uh, counter hits. I think I'm fine with counter hit because that's just the timing thing. That's a timing issue, skill issue. But I think th homing throws have got to go, man. Like that is just, I don't know, man. It's it's crazy, especially when you think about characters like King and Dragonov and all those characters. It's, it's It shouldn't be a thing. Before I, ask, before I ask, uh, like, I want to talk about, again, with throws, power crushes. So blocking, for example, Ling Xiaoyu has uh, the Waning Moon from standing. It's 12 frames, throws are 12 frames, right? Uh, she blocks a power crush, which is punishable. She can punish with the the, the throws. What do, you, what do you make about throws also, like, being able to work against power crushes as well? Arslan. Oh, so where was the question? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, throws, throws beating power crushes. Ah, uh, beating power crushes. Yeah. Like, I don't mind because I think I am too good. Like, I'm okay with grabs. I still pick grabs. <laughs> <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> uh, mm, it's okay. I don't mind. Trust me. But I think there should be a window where you can be able to break grabs even in power crush. Uh, but I think it shouldn't be home. And this is what I think of grabs. Like, I, I think for me, it's not a big deal. Like, it's not a like... I, I, some, uh, it's not a big deal, so I would decide to think. Okay, Joker? I mean, I'll just say to you, Joker, remember, like, Ling, 12 frame, waning moon, uh, it, it's an aggressive game, power crushes have to be used a bit more often. If you try to use one, 74 damage, dead. What, what do you think about throws and power crushes? Bro, get rid of that shit, man. Like, why, man? Why is that a thing? Like, the waning moon is just ridiculous, man. How much time 74? Yeah, yeah. No. 74 for what, bro, man? She's just yeah. doing nothing, man. She's not even playing the game, bro. Get the hell of it, man. Uh, Super Kuma, uh, throws. So um, throws obviously have been hashed a lot. You know you know about this. Um, homing now. Uh, they punish power crushes and, and rage arts and whatever. And um, yeah, counter, counter throws. And stuff. What, what do we make of the throw system in this game? Uh, yeah, I don't like homing throws. Uh, the thing is, I like them in some scenarios, but these scenarios are way too few for me to advocate for this mechanic. <laughs> I've done it with a lot of mechanics, but no, there's too many instances where homing throws are, are too much. So that that I'm not gonna defend. It's 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 fun like five percent of the time, right? So homing throws too good. I like uh, counter it throws. I think um, Jasandi tweeted that maybe you could have counter it throws be slightly easier, but still a lot harder. Like uh, mm -hmm. 14 frames. Like people were struggling with Victor's throws when that was just a 14 frame break. Maybe have the countered throws at 14 frames. Something to think about. But if they stay the way they are and they're not a homing, I don't really mind. What, why is it right now? Uh, eight. eight. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it depends on the throw. It's not as. Someone made a video about it. It's not as straightforward as it used to be. There's a lot of different throws with different frames. Some of There's even one that's seven frames. Hmm. Okay. It's hard. But if they're not homing, I don't mind the counter hit being still eight. But the counter hit going to 14, I think it might be okay. okay. Like I gotta say, I disagree with putting it back to generic grabs being command grabs. Because I said I played back in those days and you know I didn't have a problem with it, but it it is a huge barrier to entry. 
Like yeah. learning how to break grabs is one of the most annoying things you can do to, while learning the game. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. yeah, we can all, we, I'm, I'm pretty bad at it, but we can all break grabs here by seeing the, seeing the arms, but for most yeah. people can't do that. Right. Okay. And it's, yeah. and it's very frustrating. So having them already hard to break because of counter hits instead of it just being a hard reaction, I think but it's, then an, an, can... go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. I mean, those people cannot play versus King then. I mean, yeah, and they, they lose the yeah, game. They I mean, it, it is what it is. <laughs> but yeah, that's a so matchup like, specific thing. It's not the whole game where they're getting bodied by a basic mechanic, right? Well, we you're getting bodied by the character that yeah. does that. Me? We? All of us. Like, there were players, like, everybody used to break grabs in Tekken Tag 2 and Tekken 6 as well, no? Maybe in Pakistan. <laughs> Maybe I, in Pakistan. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a big barrier to entry. Like, Korean, that's what, it's Japanese, hard. all of them, yeah. like, <laughs> tag yeah, two, but, I, gotta tell you, I, like, I was good at breaking throws in tag two. It was 15 frame break window back then. But um, yeah. yeah, a lot of people were not breaking yeah, like, throws. I, in tag I, two. Could, I could also break throws back then when we were all playing that and that was the norm. Yeah. Right? I was, I'm not going to nah, pretend but let's be honest, amazing, but We I weren't really breaking throws at that, bro. The only, like, bro, I, I, I was playing Bambino on King all the time. If I didn't, I would lose every match, bro. Bro, let's not talk I had that. to. Uh, uh, I'm telling you, there play, there's a lot of players that were not breaking throws in even the whole of Europe in Tag 2. Like, being able to break throws consistently was, that, that was rare, man, in Europe. And yeah, Real Menace, yeah, even people like Harry Potter, a... these guys, like, they were able to do it. But, man, and not a lot of people were able to do that, man. It, it's just a two, it, the barrier Europe, to entry yeah, is too big. I feel yeah, like yeah. in Europe, you people maybe are not let me, good at breaking drafts, I think. Mm. Right? But the, the top players in oh, three yes. places in the world are good at it. Like, I, I want to I wanna go to Joey about this because he's the main guy here when it comes to throws. He's a thrower. He's a serial thrower. Loves throwing. Um, and he's commented on it a lot. Joey, the throw system, when it comes to it tracking, when it comes to punishing power crushes, when it comes to, um, to everything. What do we make of the throw system in Tekken 8? Okay, yeah. So several things here. Um, like throwing people out of power crush and it being straight up unbreakable i love that oh <laughs> i love i love the animation it's just like so in your face like you just got thrown out of your power crush bitch like <laughs> hold that i just love it it's just such an in your face thing um it's kind of just it's like get out played animation uh so i like that those can't be broken uh, particularly because there are some power crushes in this game that are so strong like the heat engaging fast safe power crushes um yeah they're all safe when they absorb something, which is probably something we should talk about oh, as yeah. well. But um, before we, we get to that, so I, I like that one aspect that you can punish the power crushes. Um, I I don't know why, for whatever reason, I don't have a huge issue with them tracking a lot. Maybe it's because I like using throws so much. Mm. Um, but I do have an issue with how small the counter hit break window is. Uh, I think it leads to some really messed up situations. So just to give like an example, like you block Dragonov running two, and you know maybe I want to threaten Hopkick in that situation because it will beat the down two and the down back three plus four. If I get thrown, I can get thrown out of the Hopkick, and it's like almost impossible to break. I think that makes it's part of what contributes to that situation being like completely overwhelming. Um, is the fact that the, the counter hit grab is so difficult to escape. So I would like to see them come up to like, yeah, maybe 14 frame break window, 15. Uh, eight is just too small. It feels almost impossible, especially mm. online. Mm -hmm. um, and lastly, something that I would like to see people, particularly like high level players, talking about way more. I think it's very important that the developers investigate this. Uh, there's this guy named Gelatin Labs who made a video um, breaking down the throw break system in Tekken 8. And he revealed in detail how if you are buffering a button, like if you're buffering the one button, for instance, and you get thrown, that the game will instantly lock you out of breaking 1 plus 2. Huh. Um, and if you are buffering 1 plus 2, um, I believe the game will completely lock you out of buffer of breaking a one or a two break. No, no, that's that's not how that works, actually. Or is it the other way around? It, no, it's, it's like if you if you if you're buffering the correct throw break, you can't break the throw. Yeah, yeah. It's, you if you're holding one and they throw you with a generic grab, 
it does it doesn't break and if you're holding one plus two okay yeah throw so you the one plus around. two it doesn't break yeah 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 okay so yeah thank you for clarifying that for me so um it's even worse even worse than what i just <laughs> described yeah, uh, you're, you're buffering the correct break you will get locked out of breaking that um that's a serious problem people need to draw attention to that like they need to if you're holding down the correct break already you shouldn't be locked out um i don't see like there would be any reason for them designing the game that way that, like, that's got to be like a glitch it's, it's a bug yeah, for sure it has to be um mm -hmm. so that needs to be talked about um yeah people are going to give their opinions about whether the the homing throw should be reverted i could definitely see a good argument for it being way too much particularly with like king um but that's like one thing that really needs to get looked at. Mm. Okay. Uh, Speed, what do we make of Frog's um, Man? I, I've been saying since the game came out that I think the throws should not be homing and counter hit. I think like counter, th I think counter hit throws are fine. I think homing throws are fine. I don't think homing and counter hit throws are fine. Um, personally, I would like to see the homing go because I, I do enjoy being faster than people. I, I, like, I like beating people up. Okay. I really like, you know, this guy is worse than me. I, I'm, he can't handle what I'm doing. I'm sidestep. I'm so sidestep, fuzzy OSing everything. I'm attacking him too fast. It's too easy to go. I'm overwhelmed. I'm gonna grab this guy, right? Like mm -hmm. when when the when the situation is is too too much. Like if you can't keep up with all the options, the throw is a 12 frame high that resets momentum and can potentially counter hit hit. Like it it does too much. So um, I would like to see the homing go. Um, the counter hit window, if they make the counter hit window bigger, that's cool. I'll, I can I can break them more. But I think the counter hit window being this small is okay. And as far as beating power crushes or punishing power crushes, I think that's cool. I think power crushes need to be punished harder than regular. So that's mm. good to me. Okay, cool. I think, yeah, we're, I, I would kind of agree with you there with what you said this, because I, I think mm -hmm. most of us kind of want to see the homing uh, aspect of it gone. And I, I'm, I just feel like I'm never going to get used to that. The amount of times where I'm reading that a throw is going to happen, I try to sidestep and then I get, I get thrown. I'm like, it's just, it just boggles my mind. And I think a lot of people have been saying that. Even I'm reading the chat, and <laughs> a lot of people seem to have an issue with that. Um, I agree. Also, because power crushes are going to be more. I was saying this even before pre-release. I was saying that power crushes are going to be very important because um, this is an aggression-based game and. I think we're not all used to throwing out power crushes just yet, but in certain situations, it's kind of the only thing you can do, right? And uh, in, in some situations to get away from certain pressure and mix-ups. So yeah, um, being punished more than normal makes sense, but that kind of moves us on to a little bit. Uh, we'll just talk briefly about power crushes. They did get buffed in this game so that I think they activate now one frame earlier. Um, at least that's what, that's what I heard. Um, power crushes, is there is there anything with when it comes to power crushes that you guys are just not okay with? I think the one thing for me power crush heat engages and that's something that joker was talking about as well so joker I'll let, I'll let you talk about this uh power crush heat engages i mean is there anything else with power crushes that you want to talk about but I, I think power crush heat engages are kind of crazy man what do you think i think some of them shouldn't be as fast as they are they shouldn't track as well like i think as seeners and victors track to one side same with things high heat engager tracks as well to one side i think that shouldn't be a thing it's it's crazy, man. It's just crazy. I think on top of everything else there is to think about when you're playing offense in this game, there's also that to think about. Like, it's crazy. I think it shouldn't be a thing. Mm. Arslan, would you agree? Um, heat engages that do power crush, um, you know, you know, they, they can also be used as a heat dash. Like you said, Nina's one plus, four, one plus two to, to do pressure. It's a, kind of a very easy way to kind of start your um, your offense or just go for a killing mix-up. Do you Are you okay with that, with that stuff? I think I agree with Joker. Like, there's nothing to add more. Uh, I think it should be. It shouldn't be homing. Uh, like, it shouldn't trap too much. It should be more linear. And uh, I think the heat engaging power crushes are way too OP. Like with Nina and with Fang. With Nina, let's say there's a wall which is breakable. You can do the. You can you can do power crush and then you can do back one plus two and you can break the wall. And it's a full combo. And then with Fang as well. You know, if there is a wall. And then you can do uh, power crush, and then you can do down power two to to break the power blast. So I think these are like, uh, or this idea, the whole idea shouldn't exist. You know, power crushes shouldn't be heat engagers, in my opinion. Maybe mm. I don't know. Uh, this is what I think. Joey, do you do you agree with that? A power crush heat engagers? Do they shouldn't they shouldn't be the same? They shouldn't. Well, I I guess the the design they're going for is that 
this property would only apply to the high power crushes so that um you know you still have i mean option. nina is mid one like oh, it's right, not right. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah nina is a mid one so it's also a heat engager as well um but i guess in that instance um they give you the option Law to throw, well, yeah. throw punish if you do block it but then it brings into the like the equation that you can use these moves with the heat dash so then you've got a power crush you know <laughs> some heat dash save on block like it's it's insane so Bang i definitely wave. i definitely see um where you're coming from with that it seems like it's too much um too much. i did want to get uh everyone's thoughts on like the fact that the ones that are punishable become safe when they successfully absorb a hit and then get blocked like do you guys like that, or what's what's the deal with that mechanic? I don't know um, what I think about that because it, it's weird. Like, so people who are, are watching at home that may not be familiar with this, if uh, obviously power crushes absorb moves, they they lose to lows, but they will absorb mids and highs. If the power crush absorbs a a mid or a high move, uh, when you when the opponent blocks it that power crush becomes safe instead of punishable. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's new. Tekken Seven that didn't exist. Sometimes you could you could uh, attack. And you can still block the power crush and punish, right? So uh, I don't know what to think about that. I think it's I think it's weird. I think that you know power crushes are supposed to be strong in this game, as a uh, as a I guess a defensive tool. Um, so I'm not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing yet. Uh, I don't think I've played enough, but I mean, yeah. I what do you guys? Sad, think? Yeah, I mean, it's very complex. Let's say uh, with Katrina, we both used to play Katrina. And Katrina power power crush used to be very slow, mm. and then even after like uh, you could able to punish that move, you know, uh, after block. So I think that's good in case of Katrina or in case of uh, Zafina because I think it varies case to case. Some of them are really fast, and but the, some of them are really slow. Uh, but when you are using power crush with the characters which are slower, then I think you should be able to block it because this is actually very slow. Like Dragono is like not too slow. Uh, who is the slowest one? Like June is one of the slowest one in the game. Yeah. And it doesn't do anything, you know, very good, uh, very good. So in that case, it's okay. But in some cases, it's not like it's too much. It's very complex, in my opinion. Mm. Uh, Akuma, yeah. do you, what do you think about the the, the absorbing? And... Uh, I mean, it makes sense. Uh, like uh, Aslan said, there's there's some moves where going for the power crush since they want you to go for more power crushes since you need them more, getting punished for because they did a fast move sometimes you know they did a read and did a fast poke because they knew they could beat the power crush mm. and sometimes it just they did a fast move and it beat the power crush right and that that makes that doesn't feel so good so like, i get it but it, it seems like most things in this game it's move per move by move and like when i'm playing king and he does power crushes and i head into it and i can't do anything about it because i head into it very annoying Mm. Right, like when he does up forward three plus four, right? Is that, is that the input? When the way yeah. he goes for the run, he absorbs a move, and it's completely free, and then he can just do it again until it hits, and then when it hits, he gets a mix up. Like that one's way too good. Whereas, uh, yeah, like Zafina's one is like it's really yeah. slow. It sh that's fine if it becomes safe, right? Mm. Exactly. And for the for the heat engager ones that you were saying, I think again it's a case by case uh, thing. Like as we said in Victor's one. It tracks, it's 15 frames, it's high, it's dumb. Like, I, I with Lee have a Power Crush high heat engager, but mm. it's got poor range and it doesn't track to either side. And when I, when I get hit by that, I don't mind. And, and when I hit people with that, it doesn't feel unfair because it doesn't track and it's got poor range. Mm. Whereas, like, as Usain and Victor, they move forward a bunch and it tracks. Mm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Speed, uh, speed. I got a problem with Nina, though. Um. Yeah. Nina's I supposed think... to be unsafe. At least the highs you can duck. Yeah. Her one I is think... just heat dash, nope, yeah. safe now. <laughs> Mix up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I think the heat engage on the highs problem is like it's kind of complex because the high power crushes themselves are overloaded for like different reasons. Like it's a power crush. A lot of them have decent range, so you can kind of toss them out in neutral uh, from a range where like you don't get to do much counterplay, right? Like if you, you you've all fought the victor or Azu Senna player who's just like sitting on the other side of the screen they're waiting for you to like twitch so they can do the the power crush heat engager right like that is long day not cool that's not cool um <laughs> so so i would like to, i would like the the moves to either like you know get slower they should, probably shouldn't be that fast because they'll clip you in neutral sometimes or um 
just the range of themselves. Like it's got too much range for too much speed with too much reward and like on block is too good. Um, maybe they shouldn't be safe. So there's a lot of things you can do to them. I think the moves are just overloaded. So I'm not sure if I hate the idea of a power crush heat engager, but the way that the moves are designed, they're too they're a little too ridiculous right now. Mm. And I think for the the power crush being safe on block, I I don't hate that mechanic. What I dislike is that sometimes the moves have too much pushback when you block them. So I feel like yeah. I feel like if you're gonna be minus nine after getting your after absorbing a move with a power crush, it should be minus minus nine in your face. In your face. So you have to yeah, like that's fine. It's fine. You you didn't you didn't successfully um escape defense. You you did not successfully power crush a move. At the very least, you should be forced to defend more. Mm. Yeah, yeah, push back as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Well, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Definitely agree. All right. Um, anything else we want to talk about when it comes to power crushes, or are we okay with that one? Because I have uh, something quite interesting to show you uh, with one of our guests on the show, ladies and lads. There was a tweet made by our very own <laughs> Aristotle and Ash. Tekken 8 be like heat burst, heat smash, power crushes, heat engages, throws. That's it. Seriously, why did they even bother giving each character a variety of moves? <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> Tekken 8. <laughs> <laughs> now the reason why i showed this to you, uh is because of something that actually me and speakers were talking about just uh before we started the stream and it was our good friend ryan hart the legend he um apparently there was a, it was a podcast done where he spoke about um the old games old days and uh, i didn't watch it so you guys can, oh, can correct me on that but i guess the 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 topic was and and the general gist of what he was saying was that games are easier now that's the direction that we're going in when it comes to fighting games. And um, this is something that I've heard from, you know, top players when it comes to Tekken 8 as well. You know, I'm not going to name drop, but, you know, some of the Korean players have been have been um, talking about it. And then there's been the whole, you know, if this guy was playing Tekken 7, he wouldn't survive. He would be, mm -hmm. this guy would be not, nowhere, nothing. Uh, but Tekken 8, you know, the mechanics are carrying him. You know, um, so what do we think about that? What do we think about the game getting getting e getting easier, or, or is is the, is this game getting easier? Is it is it providing a crutch for players to to be able to win? Is the skill gap uh, closing now, as as uh, was said on that podcast? So what do we think? Uh, anyone anyone can start. I, don't know. I think the my take why I did, why I wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> I think my take was. Okay, so we, I think all of us, we have been playing, I don't know about Super Akuma, but I know about like Speed Kick, Joe Fury and, and him. We have been playing from Tekken 6 at least, yeah? Uh, Super yes, Akuma, you, you, what was I've the game? I've been playing same? since Tekken I, 6. Yeah. I actually started in Tag 2, I started when Tag 2 came out. Tag 2, okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. And like, we have been playing like, down for one, one side step, down fours, you know, basic games. And when I when I'm fighting recent newcomers, you know, new players in Tekken 8, what they're doing is they're gonna power crushes, heat smashes, down back fours, and then power crush again <laughs> into heat engager. I think this is this is not good. This is not Tekken. This is not what we used to play. I am just against. I think this idea, and this is why I I uh, uh, I did post okay. about this. What do you guys think? I mean. Uh, even Tekken 7 was, they they introduced Rage Art, they introduced uh, Rage Drives and other stuff, but still, we were playing poking based games, we were playing uh, defensive and op offensive options we had. Right now, what it feels like we only have offensive options. That's the only approach that you have to take if you want to win or if you want to survive in this game. Before, it's up to us if we want to play defensive, if we want to play offensive. Even with one character, let's say, if you are playing with uh, Katrina, you could play offensive and you could also play defensive with the same character. But now it's, it doesn't feel like keep damage, uh, grabs, homing grabs, heat smash, heat burst, power crushes. Like, you cannot play neutral based games or you cannot uh, play poking based game. This is like, I don't like it. Vikas, mm. what do you think of that? Um, I think it's just... Uh... It's a different game style. I personally, I, I personally, I didn't like Tekken Seven, right? Um, I thought the Why? game awarded deep. I thought, Why? I thought the game was too <laughs> simple. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did not like the. I, I did not like the way that there were times in Tekken Seven where the smartest move was to just not interact, right? Like there were times where you know you just you just sit there and you look at the other dude and you're like, hey, I have this, I have this huge lead, and he's sitting there, he's 
fuzzy pairing every time you step up and he might he's he's been showing the magic fours and and you're like well the smart thing to do here is to just hold the lead and like you know th like threaten him but not actually interact um i didn't like that i didn't like that coming from tech attack 2 where i felt like i would just you know not get low parried and magic forward for my my whole life bar so um when i played when i played 7 i had to adapt to it when it first came out and you know you guys you guys some of you guys were there I tweeted a lot about that game as it was coming out. I was like, bro, I hate this game. I, I, I like Tag 2 more, this game style, whatever. But um, it took it took a while for me to be able to like kind of develop a respect for what people were doing in Tekken 7, right? Um, when I, at first, when Tekken 7 came out, I was seeing people who probably did not have the skill set to play in the more interactive Tekkens. But they were, they were doing fine in Tekken 7. I was like, this guy sucks at Tekken. This guy, this, guy, this guy wouldn't be good in the other Tekken. He's only good at Tekken 7. And then as the game went on, I was like, you know what? It's not his fault. That's the way the game is played. He's playing, he's playing with what's, what's here. Uh, there are players that could do well in Tekken 7 that probably couldn't do well in Tekken Tag 2. There are players that could do well in Tekken Tag 2 that probably couldn't do well in Tekken 7. So it's just a new game style. I have to adapt to it. And I think the same of Tekken 8 right now. There are players who probably were good at Tekken 7, they won't be good at Tekken 8. But there and there are players that are probably good at Tekken 8 who couldn't do anything in Tekken 7. And I just think that's how that just comes with the game being different. My issue right now though is with the balance, right? So the balance does allow people to win kind of people who wouldn't be good ever at anything win. But that <laughs> at anything. Know, <laughs> at anything ever. But but that that's just a balance issue. When the balance goes out the way, I think the game the game style is gonna be what it is going to be. And you know, well we're we're solid enough to adapt to the game, so I believe we'll be fun. And um, you know, I have no real love for the Tekken Seven style, so I'm not sad to see it go. So the Tekken Seven style, when when you in my chat before you said, mm -hmm. it, it, just to make it in a nutshell, you said you prefer brain dead offense over brain dead defense. Is that still yes. your? Yes. Yeah. 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 So I, Tekken I, I Seven was brain dead defense. And... Yeah. 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 I, th I think. I think it was not super. Uh, involved yeah. defensively, like sitting there doing your your fuzzy parries, your side stubs, you, <laughs> you just you know, back that back that shape for you know, sixty seconds. You hit. I, play, I'm, I was a Cody. I, I got. I played Cody Mitsu for like four thousand dollars, bro. That shit. But like <laughs> you just, you, face, you know, bro, you know, you know, I, I, <laughs> you know, I played, I played Kuni, I played Kuni Mitsu. I was like just moving backwards, like this is this, okay, this is fine. Set two every so often, that back three three, and running the clock game. It, you know. I, I didn't enjoy that at all. I would much rather be losing or winning by going in and hitting the other guy and getting hit as opposed to what I was doing that game. Or something, yeah. I yeah. disagree with like everything he said, like mm -hmm. to be very honest. I mean, the first thing, uh, no, it's like, I, the first thing is that Tekken 8 is completely different as compared to Tekken 6, Tekken Tag 2, Tekken, Tekken 7. They all are like very similar when it comes to like the generic uh, basic game plan, you know? Uh, but Tekken 8 is a completely different game. And I know that a lot of people are saying, even Spa, even Joker is saying it's like vanilla version, they're going to fix it. But I think the direction they are going, I don't like it. Like they are just adding heat engagers, like heat and other stuff, heat burst, heat engager, heat smash. Like the whole idea, I don't like it. It's like the game is for like noobs at the moment. It feels like <laughs> it's not... It's not for like competitive players. Like it's this is what I, I'm I, I'm gonna say. Mm, like you, you tell me like what you feel. Like like let me let, let me let him explain. Like I missed Tekken Seven. I think having backdash as a defensive option was a very good idea. I think having backdash as a defensive option now with heat would just like eliminate a lot of uh, canned mix-up situations. I think. I personally think I understand what people are saying. They don't like the the new style of playing Tekken. But again, I don't think it's going to stay like this. I think it's going to change over time. It's only been two months. With time, the meta will change. You know, we'll develop new strats. But yeah, I'm not going to lie. I do miss just backdashing and yeah. poking instead of shitting out. You know, he engaged with fan friendships and everything. Like in the in six to Tekken Seven, we have been playing like this. We have been doing back dashes, jabs. We have been doing neutral four combo. Okay, let's let's not uh, add neutral four combos. But the basic <laughs> idea of Tekken was always about this. From Tekken three times, you know, 
it was mm-hmm. the basic idea you have to play like you have to do back dash and uh come closer to your opponent you know there must be some strategies to do that but now it's like very obvious you are just running towards your opponent and doing power crush or oh, sorry and doing power crush or either heat heat burst and then that's it it's like it's not logic mm-hmm. it's very stupid you know it's mm-hmm. like there's less thinking involved now like yeah. you can just do certain moves and the risk reward is just like insane yeah, well, I think and that's part. You I think you, you go for hit, 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 smash, and then you take plus frame. You block. I agree with Kokoma's tweet, tweets where he said that it's like a 50 50 we are in casino or something. I think I agree with that part as well. Mm. Yeah, I think I think a lot of that has to do with how strong the moves are themselves, though, right? Like the game, like the game style is naturally going to be more interactive, where you just have to hit people. But the moves and the characters are so strong that all it takes is like one or two of these things to work for you, and then you win. I think if the when, yeah. when the character when the characters and the moves get toned down, then people will do, they'll be able to do this stuff, but they'll actually have to place them like intelligently. And yeah. and when they, as they're trying as you're trying to feel out like the intelligent placement for this stuff, you'll just be using your movement and your pokes and all that stuff. But right now, the the other stuff it's just it's just too rewarding to hit like the. The you know the hit, it's too rewarding to hit the power crush the heat engager the throw and you can just keep going for it so much that like it feels like that's all there is to the game right now. Mm. Mm-hmm. Joey, yeah. do, do you do you agree with that? You've heard both sides, you know, speaking. So, uh, so the, there was th- those phrases that you used of like uh, that that Speakix was saying like mindless offense and like mindless defense and he prefers like mindless offense. Uh, I don't know. If I can really conceive of this idea of mindless defense, so like, yeah, you can have like a very strong backdash and like disengage, disengage, hit and run, <laughs> and you know, Speed Kicks is very familiar with playing that style. Of course, he was doing that <laughs> yeah. with doing that with with Kunimitsu, and he was kind of saying like, well, like this isn't fun, it's not enjoyable, but I have this feeling that you know. You've reached a level in Tekken where you're very good at doing that, and it almost seems like trivial and disengaged to you. But that's an extremely difficult thing for people to learn how to execute in Tekken. It requires a ton of knowledge and dedication and like discipline, patience to play that way. Um, it was a way that, that Arslan played in Tekken Seven. You know, take him to the infinite stage, hit and run with Kunimitsu, and you know maybe. A player would say this doesn't feel like very fun to do, or a spectator might say this might not like look very fun to watch. But I don't think I could ever call it mindless because I think it requires you know so much work and talent to play that way. Um, whereas the idea of mindless offense, that's extremely easy for me to conceive of. <laughs> <laughs> running two, running two, down back three plus four, heat smash. Anybody can do that, right? Yeah, so, exactly. Um, I think there we can definitely see like there could be could be trade-offs like the game could be more accessible or more exciting if it's more offensive but i think like defense to me is always uh playing defense in tekken at a very high level is extremely impressive um even if it can be uh boring and disengaged or uninteractive however somebody wants to characterize it um so that's where i think like arslan's uh concerns come from because i think um mindless offense is a much more concerning thing um than uh quote unquote mindless defense that, that's just my the way i see it yeah, yeah i agree I, thank so you so much it's so much less fun i'm sorry I, yeah. I like it when i like it when my defense is threatened by like stuff you know mm-hmm. what i mean like i like as much as I, Joey, as much as I hated fighting you in in Tekken Seven when when it was money time, right? Because of your you know your Bardic, right? It was it was it was more fun to think like, okay, when do I have to actually interact with this, right? When do I like when when will these interactions kill me? As opposed to just knowing, okay, avoid this interaction, avoid this interaction, avoid this interaction. Fuzzy here, sidestep here, magic for this. Like, um, I the the idea that I have to actually defend, do manage all of these Tekken mechanics while defending, and I have to worry about. The, the pressure coming from my opponent is is really fun. So with that, like I'm like my you know my defense is getting tested by like in Tekken Tekken Eight, your defense is getting tested by noobs. 
Okay, I don't know. Like, there's no other way to say it, right? Like, <laughs> no, it's rough. Like, like, it's, like, <laughs> it's concerning. Like, that's that, that's the concern, isn't it? <clears throat> like, yeah, yeah. yeah, if, you yeah, yeah, compete, yeah. if you got to compete, and your yeah. livelihoods on the line. It's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. the problem here is that I think I feel like Speed Kicks is speaking from like casual player point of view, and then we all are speaking from competitive player's point of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's like true. this. It's like. He's taking those players' side, and then with four of three of us, we are just like, mm -hmm. no, we want to compete, we want to win tournaments, and then we are just, uh, you know, speaking from their point of view. It mm -hmm. just feels like this, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Speaking of, like, before you yeah. continue, I just want to say, like, this is this is the, uh, what Joey said is kind of what I was trying to get at, at my stream when mm -hmm. I was talking to you, even though I was we were saying, we were memeing each other and stuff, but mm -hmm. uh, what I was saying is that mindless offense is so offense is a lot easier than defense and that's always right. how it's been the first thing people learn when they play pickup tekken is what are my buttons what are my attacks what are my combos and that's you know mm -hmm. uh like joey said doing running two running two into down back three plus four into heat smash is very easy to do i mean it's not going to take me or ulsan or arslan ash to, to you know levels of you know practice to be able to do that um and just like you said your defense is being tested by noobs you know uh, and and like Joey said, that is concerning. You know, that is concerning because okay. um, and like like Kokoma said, you know, casino. Where we feel, I feel like I'm at a casino right now. And I was actually at, on, on his stream yesterday. He was playing league or something, and I, I said, you know, oh, what's going on? Like, how, you know, just just to find out what he thought about the game. And he said, I, I he goes, I'm very good at this game. That's what Kokoma said. He goes, I'm very good. Um, I feel like my he, he's always been an aggressive player. Anyway, his fangs were most one of the most aggressive fangs I've I've seen, to be honest. Um, and he goes, look, I'm good at this game, but it's so tiring, mentally draining. Like I just feel like mm. I'm guessing so much. And That's blah, blah, blah. yeah, uh, but <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> my my point is this is like, um, I guess what these guys are trying to say, Arslan, Joey, Akuma. Well, I, we'll see what Akuma says I as well. I haven't said it. Yeah, yeah. Yet. But um, <laughs> but, but what I think is that <laughs> what I think is. <clears throat> That offense being being that it's much easier than than defense, and that defense mm -hmm. is what typically has been, you know, winning people tournaments. Mm -hmm. Now that you kind of you you close that gap a little bit to make the offense more more weighted, that's what I think people are more scared about. I mean, I don't you could say yeah, that's what I was what Joey said basically is what I was trying to say as well. But the, yeah, but the way it always comes down to things, right? Is if your defense is so. If your defense is better than the other person, then you will take less damage from their offense than they take from your offense, right? So you have to be, you still have to be willing to, like, you know, you run your offense. And if the other guy's defense is worse than yours, you'll beat, you should beat him, right? As, assuming, assuming players are two equal, of, of equal skill and everything besides defense, then the player with the better defense should win, right? Uh, well, yeah, that's, that's the, that logically that makes sense, right? But what if you have a player whose defense is, whose, Who's hit a certain level of defense, right? I mean, let's mm -hmm. talk, take me and Arslan for example. His defense right. is way better than mine, but my defense is pretty good too, right? But mm -hmm. um, if me and Arslan play, I'm I'm sure I'm taking games off him more than I did in Tekken Seven, you know? And and that's mm -hmm. just purely because um, it doesn't matter how good your defense is in certain situations. Like Joey's defense is, is oh, everyone here has great defense, right? Mm -hmm. But Joey, you know, great defense as well. But what's, it doesn't matter if I or someone else does running two, running two, damage was four, heat smash. <laughs> like, um, yeah. Joey, it doesn't matter how good his defense is in that situation. What's he going to do? You know, like, he kind of has to... Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's, that's what I meant about the game balance thing, though. I think mm. my, my, my... So the, the, my current understanding of the game is that a lot of things are going to get toned down, as mm. they do, as they always do from Tekken Vanilla, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm at, as I say this, I'm imagining the future where, you know, the moves are less broken, right? The, the, when when you're you know when you're fighting like a mid tier character in this game, when you're playing mid tiers versus mid tiers. It's a pretty fun game. <laughs> um, but right now, people are picking King, they're picking Dragonoff, they're picking Azucena. Mm. They're you know, and they're they're running all all the stuff. There's no neutral. There's like very little neutral against these characters. And as soon as as soon as they use their move that skips the neutral, they like start making you guess. Mm. And I think you know that's going to be a problem. That, and it's, it's it's hard to find consistency against neutral like that, especially when people are like you know picking like. I don't know like I was saying, just running, just running in and saying, "Screw it!" If either I die or you die, right? Right. Um, I think as that as that gets toned down, which it, which it probably should, you know, it's this is like the second was this is the second patch of the game, mm. so um, you know, we'll have a more offense favored game where like an, like an offense favored game where brain you know brain dead offense probably won't be winning noobs games, but um, another thing is sorry, like, like Arsenal said. Okay. 
Another thing is, right, we haven't really had a proper balanced patch. It's just been bug fixes. That's mm-hmm. what people need to yeah. understand. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. you know? yeah. I think that's yeah. so important. Like, when we get an actual balanced patch, we'll see how the game plays then. And then mm-hmm. from then on, we can see. I think the reason why we're talking, and why I'm here, and then why people are making tweets, because, uh, like, how the developers, developers will know, like, what we want, or what pro players, or other players think. Mm-hmm. I think that's. Discussions are really healthy and tweets are also really healthy in order to let them know that these are the issues, you know, mm-hmm. like if we are just waiting, keep quiet and waiting for the balance patches, we don't know what they're going to do now. You know, if, mm-hmm. if that's the reason we need to speak, you know, to tell mm-hmm. them, okay, these are the issues that I have. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, that, that's why that's why it seems like complaining. Was it a uh, big bird or yeah. angry bird? One of them said, uh, oh, I see nothing but complaining about Tekken 8 is the honeymoon, uh, honeymoon period over. And I'm just. When I was seeing the exact same thing for Street Fighter, by the way, <laughs> it's just like, yeah, we complain because we're trying to point things out, but no, the mm-hmm. game's great. Right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and yeah. I think Joker's right, and I think actually uh, everyone's made good points. Uh, speaking, so I think you're right as well when it comes to. Um, I think m- perhaps the biggest issue right now is probably just the balance of the game and not necessarily mm-hmm. the mechanics, although. Arsan has has sp- spoke specifically, and we have spoken in length already about the heat burst system, which I think is probably the other most significant thing uh, when it comes to you know turn stealing and momentum and kind of the, you know uh, not really needing <clears throat> the best defense in certain situations because it mm-hmm. activates this kind of steroided version of yourself where you can go crazy and and test even the best players in the world's defense. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, Akuma, did do, do you do you agree? Is there anything that you'd like to to say when it comes to that? I mean, uh, you know, as as a great man once said, uh, uh, talk with the the intent to listen and not the intent to reply, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, o- overall, I would say, you know, I pl- I played Tag Two, I played Tekken Six, I, pl- I played all the Tekkens, right? I like all of them, right? I like all of them. Maybe I didn't play the same Tekken Seven as you guys. You might, some might argue that, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, when it comes to mindless defense, like I don't agree. Same thing as Joey is like. It it wasn't it didn't look particularly interactive, but you were sweating for the whole time, right? Because you like yeah, you had to not interact, but not interacting is something that you do actively, right? Because you and don't that's... want to die. Oh, that's why and I, I and I understand why you don't like that because I love Tekken Eight. I'm with you. I love. I prefer Tekken Eight. I'm with. Yeah. I'm with you. But it was hard, right? And I yeah. understand missing that tension of the defense because mm-hmm. it felt great. I love Tekken 7, right? Mm-hmm. I played it that long. I played it from the start, bro. Jokyo has been here for like, what, three years? I've been, I've been playing since the game came out. Mm-hmm. I really like it, right? But now that we have Tekken 8, like my mm-hmm. own, my 99% of my issues with the game are balanced, right? Yeah. I like most of the mechanics. Some things I'm like, eh, okay, it's fine if it's there, but whatever. That's personal preference. But like the only things I, I have problems is specific times where something is a problem. So for me, it's all balance. Yeah. And yeah, this is the vanilla version. Once it gets uh, hopefully toned down, <laughs> I think for me, it could be the best Tekken we've had, right? Yeah. That's it could become too. that. It's not that right now, right? Because, and yet, like Speedkick said, you play mid tier against mid tier. I'm doing like Lars against Lee, I'm having loads of fun. Paul mm-hmm. against Lee, I'm having loads of fun. And then I fight against Dragunov and I want to turn off the game. <laughs> and it's and it it it's just a balance problem. Like like you're yeah. saying, oh mindless offense, running two, running two, then back three plus four, heat smash. Yeah, that's Dragunov. Mm-hmm. That's not every character in the game. That's just, <laughs> yeah, not yeah, just yeah, him. Exactly. Like, yeah. And but you pick like the our... exact example that's that's the best character, probably. <laughs> well, it's top go, three in every on. list. Right? I can go on with a lot more things that are like that if you want. Mm. I mean <laughs> Do it, bro. Do it. No, there's Do plenty, it. but it's all about toning <laughs> these a, things a, down. I got a list. I got a whole list. <laughs> Don't worry. But like, yeah. It's like there's a there's a lot of that in the game, but it's just that needs to be toned down. And overall, there's a lot of smart design decisions. It's balanced decisions that are my issue. Because mm. right? yeah. there's some things that feel messed up. Fighting games feel messed up. Like Bro, older fighting games, you're like, oh, this neutral, whatever. Have you played some of the older, older fighting games? You can die very quickly in older fighting games. Yeah. Like, yeah. bro, like, Tag 2, oh, the pinnacle of neutral. Bro, Eddie killed you in one combo. Kazuya could kill you in one combo. Plenty of characters could do that. That doesn't mean there was no neutral, but there was messed up stuff that happened. Mm-hmm. You take some older 2D games, bro, you, 
Have you played the um, Okuto no Ken fighting game? It's one <laughs> hit dead. It's okay, pure it's... neutral until someone gets hit and they get hit by an infinite. Like Akuma in Tekken 7. Wow, that's crazy. Man. Basically, yeah, yeah. right? But that's in that's in older games. Because we were talking about that Ryan Hart tweet, whatever, right? Yeah. Or that the, yeah, yeah. the clip. And it's just older games, older games. There's messed up stuff in older games as well. Yeah. Fighting games are messed up. You're getting hit. You shouldn't feel good. <laughs> there needs to be a balance to it, but you're never going to be yeah. happy to get beat up. Yeah. But I think there's more to think about. So, and I find a lot of the interactions in Tekken 8 more interesting, mm. even though some of the interactions are completely brain dead casino 50 50s. Mm -hmm. But overall, I think with not that much tweaking, it could become my favorite Tekken. I, but, right, I, but right now, it's, it's a nightmare battle. I, I actually 100% agree with what Akuma said. That, what he said is what I believe as well. I think, if you think about it, right? A lot of people, like the top players are complaining um, from what I've seen about the current state of the game. But remember, the top players are probably playing against each other who are all playing top five characters. And as Joey said, I think there's probably like 15 characters I can put into top five right at the moment. <laughs> um, and um, yo, I, I think when you have that game, let's say you have Kuma versus, I don't know, Victor or some, and you play that matchup, it's going to be a lot more fun than playing as a center versus Dragonov. You know, it's it's mm -hmm. it's one of those situation that's what i think um so with a balance change i think um you know things could become a lot more fun uh is there anything else that people want to add to this like arslan i know you said specifically that it's not just the balance of the game but also the mechanics you feel like maybe the heat is the heat is a problem as well do you think that if there was just nerfs to a lot of characters that you would enjoy it more i think the thing that you said top players I think everyone is top player, is a top player right now. We should not say who is a top player. Everyone is yes! playing like they are a top player. I think that's that's one thing. And yeah, I agree with Super Guma most of the part. Uh, that uh, when, once uh, we have the balance patch, things will become normal and then we'll join the game as well. Yeah, I think Super Guma pretty much covered. Uh, uh, I agree with him. Yeah, most of the time. Uh, Joey, is, is anything you want to add? Um, I think, yeah, balancing the the cast and the overpowered things in the game will go a really long way. Um, I think like the issues I have with system mechanics, um, pale in comparison to like the balance issues. Um, the one thing that like just from our discussion that I like really uh want to emphasize, I think like should be solved is that like that throw system bug. Please. Um, that's that's a big deal. Uh, especially for competitive play. But yeah, balancing things out will go a really long way. Um, however, I do have some tendency to be pessimistic about things. <laughs> and um, just the experience with like uh, Leroy and Fakumram coming out in Tekken 7 and seeing like the very clear direction that they like to go in with super, super powered DLC characters. Like as soon as they come out, like, oh, sell 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 the dlc like i i've a lot of reason to believe that it's going to be a similar situation so while they might balance things out uh, i'm concerned that like eddie is going to be game breaking and all the the characters coming will be game breaking um just something to i guess be ready for rather more than anything yeah. I can't you know, wait for like, AK to be top tier, bro. It, it might, so it I can finally play top tier. <laughs> it might not even be a full like sell thing. It might just be how they make new characters. Do you remember when Tekken 7, 7.0 was out and Vanilla Jack came out like the first time? Forward to say. Like, forward to say. Yeah, say forward to. They were just forward to and back, back and forth. Tekken Crash was just Jack. And like. <laughs> forward to a <laughs> safe. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, my first release. It's not what I would say. Right. Um, and Kazumi's initial like down for one. Like uh, like before before the the four nerfs. It was a projectile, like, basically. Yeah, yeah, it was absurd. So I think you know the the new characters coming will add you know add some unfortunate spice to the balance that's already a little bit suspect. So uh, yeah. um, you know, and as a, like you know, like Arsenal said, right? As a casual player, I get to enjoy this in its broken mess, have a good time, mm -hmm. um, and wait for the balance to make a good game. But okay. I am not. I am not like, you know, the best Tekken 7 player of all time. So I don't have to worry about people going, oh, man, you are you aren't winning in this game right now. And you're two months deep. So mm -hmm. maybe it's a, a much less stressful for me right. to deal with this. Um, mm -hmm. So I can be a little bit more, I guess, optimistic about the state of the game and the, and the direction it's going to go. Yeah.
Okay. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and, and like Arslan said, you know, it's it's good that we're having this conversation because it needs to be spoken about. So I think let's move on to our final topic because we've already kind of just started talking about it. The current balance of the yeah. game. Um, now, I want to start just by asking you guys what you think, the, who you think are the problematic characters, you know, who are the, who are the, the, the bad guys who are the villains in this game right now i will i will start with 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 my list of my, my, my top five i think um you have ling xiaoyu i think it's a big problem i think um you're ling xiaoyu is a big problem yeah, in your... yeah. ling xiaoyu i think um, well, this guy's yeah i don't feel like ling xiaoyu is a big big problem yeah maybe you guys don't know how to fly fight maybe i'm a player versus China. You guys only have Irtazar Shokan in Pakistan. <laughs> well, I feel like Lee Shah is a big player. Oh my god, bro. Uh, yeah. Um, maybe you just don't have any good Ling players in Pakistan, Arslan, you know? Okay, we'll see in the future. <laughs> All right, so um, I think I think Ling, Dragonov, Fang, um, Azusena, and King. Probably. I don't know. But you could, There's like I said, there's a lot of characters. You know, I think Lee's really strong. I think. Um, I think yeah, Devil Jen is really strong. This. Jen, I think, is really good too. There's a lot of good characters. Um, but yeah, uh, you guys can go. Like, well, Arslan, what do you think? I mean, what, what are the problem characters for you in this game right now? Balance-wise, who's really strong? I want to hear his tier list. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll oh, give okay. my... Listen, I'll say 10 characters, but I'm probably going to say 15 because there's too many good characters. Okay. Top 5. Who are top 5? For me? Yeah. Okay, first I'd say Dragonov, second Ling, third Fang, Fourth, Azucena. Fifth, I'd say Lily. Lily. I think people are sleeping on Lily. Sixth, <laughs> oh, I'd Lily. say Reina. Seventh, Alyssa. Oh man, you have a whole list. Uh, who else is there? <laughs> Devil Jin. Actually, Jin. I'd put Jin over Devil Jin. I think Jin is slept on. That's my, that's my top. I think Jin. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> so, is your top 10? Yeah, I said 10. I, I, okay, I think. This is your top 10. And King as well, King. Uh, yeah. Mm. I think for me, is first is Fang. Mm. Second uh, is Dragonov. And the third is Azucena. Um, and then I think, who else? I don't think about like top five because I can add a lot of, peop a lot of players in like four and fifth positions. Yeah. I think these are the top three, in my opinion. Um, and the real problem is like, I think is the is the mechanic it's not about the character i think that's the real problem lies uh, and but there are some moves that are really broken about this character in case of fang like full crouching 4-1 mm. i think it shouldn't be it should, it should be like blocks done on the first move something like that it's easier to fight dragon i think than fang in tournament in my opinion but like there are like, a lot of things about when it comes to fighting these characters in tournament but the real problem lies in the mechanics. Let's say if we have less chip damage on Azucena's running 3-2, Azucena would have been uh, this much of a problem, you know? Or uh, maybe downfall 1-4 should be minus 10, I think. So it's mm -hmm. also it's more, so these are like the top three, but the problem lies in the system, not in the characters, in my opinion, more problem lies in the system. Mm. Uh, Akuma, what do we think? Uh, all right, so three biggest problems for me. Dragonov, I think he's genuinely he's close to release Leroy for me. Really, release Leroy is still good. He's on, he's on that level of just his moves do too much too easily. Right? It's snowball just, effect. Yeah, snowball mm -hmm. effect. Like he 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 hits you once, it's over. Like you feel like you lost the round. He hits you down back three plus four. You already feel like you lost. You're full health, but it feels like the round's over. Right? He just does too much too easily. Then there's Azucena, too much too easily again. And King's just sniffing glue, right? So, <laughs> like the the three the three of them, like they need to they need fixing. They they're like the the problems, right? Then I think characters that are just too strong that need to be put back in line would be Feng, Nina, Ling. Devil Jin's actually grown on me. I don't feel like he's that bad uh, as I ori originally thought, but still probably needs a bit of toning down. But I thought he was worse than uh, than he is. I've grown a bit on it. Kazuya has been uh, creeping up. A lot of people have been saying Kazuya is better than Devil Jin now. And I can kind of feel it. Like I, It doesn't feel like you're playing Tekken 8 against Kazuya. 
Bro, I've said this from the start as well. I think Kazia is so slept on. I think yeah. Kazia arguably is better than Devijin in Heat. If Devijin didn't have his Heat smash, I think Kazia in Heat is so dumb. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So, uh, Kazuya might be a problem. Like, I went to Japan and talked to the Japanese players. They kind of opened my eyes on Kazuya. So, Kazuya needs uh, needs some looking at. I don't really need. I don't really know what to change on Kazuya, but Kazuya needs some fixing. Like I said, Feng's too strong. Link's too strong. Uh, Devil Jin's a bit too strong. Uh, so I'm looking at the roster now. Uh, Lily. Not much needs to change, but maybe she's maybe a bit above the rest. But there's always I I, I consider like there's always gonna be some characters above the rest. So she she's in that too strong, but I don't think she's an urgent need of fixing. Nina is is big up there. It, like it feels like she does too much. Like they gave her back all the nerfs she had from the demo. Because we all go in like, oh, they took away the counter at launches, but they gave her a bunch of stuff in return, but she's still good. And then they gave it all back when the game came out. So she still has back four. She still has down back two. Um, yeah. she's, she has I mean, I, ridiculous combo tough. damage. She has that power crush that we keep talking about. Like She has Bare way too, way too much. Bear strings that now have mix-ups that don't need to be there. <laughs> like, so yeah, she needs uh, fixing. I'll put it still, above, uh, still below the first three I said. But... Her, I think her and Feng are like second in line. So that, probably my top five is Dragunov, Azucena, King, Feng, Nina. And uh, Ling's probably like right behind. But like, if she she could be in front of, of him. I don't, I don't really mind it. So yeah. Like Victor's annoying, but I don't think he's top tier. Mm. Uh, no, Reina, I need more Reina XP. I'm starting to see the problem. Bro. Like, I'm starting to... Like, stupid is fine, but I'm starting to see how good she is. I'm starting to see how how good she is, but I still need more XP. Mm. And Jun... Jun's a bit too strong, but she's overrated. Jun's overrated, but she's she's very good. The rest, for me, are kind of fine. Maybe low, but I I need more low XP. I can't talk yet. Yeah, yeah I, I hear everyone talking about low. But I don't, yeah, yeah, you named Abba character. I, don't, I, don't the I think the thing about, like... The thing is that there's a lot of hidden characters that we don't know at the moment. Yeah. They might be like very strong. Yeah, but everyone's focusing on the top. Like dude. everyone is like in Pakistan, where I feel like I feel like Claudio is also strong, but no one's gonna talk about Claudio because it's mm. not popular. No one is winning, but I feel like Claudio is also very strong. So there's are like a lot of characters who are hidden, and we we didn't explore them. Uh, um, so, can I ask you I what makes Claudio so good apart from FF4? Because I'm I'm genuinely asking I. He does like he seems good, but I can't tell what really puts him above everyone else. Apart from FF4, what am I'm I missing? I'm not saying he's like above everyone else, but I think he's very strong. No, the right, above the mid tier, basically. Yeah, because he has the he a raised drive kind of string back four two in heat, mm -hmm. and then uh, the new mechanics that allows Claudio and Leo to be to have the special ability even after using the heat, and then after rage R, he also has the heat. You know, not not the special move. You know, where he can do far one plus two, one plus two combo, and then down one two. And there's a on blast stage of uh, floor, not floor, wall breaking stage. He can do, uh, he can break the wall with his he he smash. Oh yeah. So I think these are the kind of things that are really really powerful about him. It's so scary yeah. about him. I don't I'm think we touched on like in. I don't think we we touched on like installs. I think some characters with installs and he become a bit overwhelming like he said Starburst, having Starburst. to guess between like a low he smash and let's just say that starburst board one plus two like it's too much man it's too yeah much. in mm. heat yeah. let's say if he's in heat you can uh, you can do three far one plus two far one plus two and it's anti-high you know you cannot do anything about it and then down back four down back uh, he has a new mix up side step four it is side step down back one plus two yeah it's a combo now it's, it's not like yeah, yeah it's a launcher now Mm -hmm. So I think these are the things that makes him buff. Mm -hmm. So like the yeah, question that, 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 that makes uh, sense. That makes sense. Yeah. I the thing is that there are characters we don't know, and they might be like very strong. The way that we didn't a lot of the like eighty percent of the world didn't know about Akuma was so mm -hmm. broken. They found out later. You know, and I was Akuma playing it like the first few seasons. I was playing it. As, how is he? How exactly is he bad? <laughs> like, like I'm doing, <laughs> like, like I'm killing you every time I hit you. What? How is he bad? <laughs> So like Bro. this is the thing. So we are not sure like who are really really strong right now. But like three characters that we all gonna agree, I think is Fang, Dragon, or Zena. 
at the moment. I think they're like no. Yeah, true. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Uh, Joey, what do we what do we think? Um, so I think everyone else <clears throat> just laid out a lot of really good ideas and you know identifying like the strong super strong characters. Um, Got to take into consideration like the character's strength as a whole, but I do like focusing on focusing in on like specific moves that I think are stupid and overpowered. Um, so to name a few, um, <laughs> I think I think Jin down two is an outrageous move. Um, <laughs> I think that this move is so stupid, and uh, I've had some people pushing back on me like it's it's not that good. If you... who who dead say that? CPM said me the, give gen, me, gen players, gen players. CPM give said me the that address. He said that he said it's reactable <laughs> because within five minutes, my <laughs> motor was reacted to my down twos. Yeah, it's reactable. I think it's reactable as well. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. But but who, but who think... cares? Who cares if it's reactable? I can place it in situations as like a counter hit launcher to beat hives. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, the reactableness doesn't make it any better. Like uh, yeah. the way I was I was putting it, like imagine you took like hey Hachi's down back two. And you made it faster, and you made it have better tracking, and you made it a counter hit launcher. Minus that fourteen. Was, that, was minus, that was minus fourteen. Would, would you mm. be like, hey, was, you can still react to it. It's not that good. It would be the most <laughs> insane thing ever, right? <laughs> uh, so I think Jin down two is stupid. I think his forward forward two uh, is way too good as well. Just all Mishima uh, forward forward twos are crazy. Yeah, yeah Demon um, Pot's crazy. Yeah. I think double Jin's heat smash needs to be looked at. Um, Drag down back three plus four. We've already talked about it to death. Ozzy, I think three two. Drag's um, back four as well is ridiculous. Why does it ground? Why does it, it hit grounded? Be grounded? Yeah, the grounded hit is is really like up. I think moves shouldn't hit grounded and flip over, man. There's too many moves that do that now, mm -hmm. and I don't like that at mm -hmm. all. Like you can't even stay on the floor and chill on the floor for a bit, man. You have to get up. <laughs> like down, down forward three. You, have, you have to get up and then you die. I'm yeah. saying it. Yeah. Frames down forward three. Yeah. Dragon's two CF four. There's a million views. Yeah. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. I, good point. I, I, I think you know the the old back four three or back four is it back four one or back four two? I can't remember. Like the fact that that mid extension was safe, I think was fine because it didn't do as much. But now that he you're risking, like he can just go for the high from the fourteen frame low um, like ground hitting mid. That's a heat dash launcher. But then there's a safe mid extension if he just kind of doesn't want to take the risk for it. Like, I feel like that needs to be toned down. And if you press on the third hit, he gets a guaranteed back four free. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. He just gets too many properties. Down forward one four. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, why is it a counter hit launcher? Like, I can understand get, getting something on counter hit. Why is it a launcher on counter hit? Yeah. Uh, the full yeah. class. I mean, it, the thing is, I, I'm. I'm confused. One thing that I think was really good in Tekken 7 was when patch notes came out, they gave reasoning as to why certain things were buffed or nerfed or whatever, or yeah. added, you know, and I really loved that. That was, an, that was something that the community asked for and they gave it to us uh, immediately, you know. This is why we've, we've, we've given this uh, move, this change, because we thought that this character was struggling without this or whatever, you know, any reasoning. I would love to see the reasoning as to why they decided to give... Dragonov, two <laughs> really, really strong lows when he already had arguably the best low in the game. So down to, okay, he, he's really good low, but now you give him a hatchet kick who has plus seven or whatever, yeah, counter hits, I, I knocks down. I was talking to, to a Dragonov player about that and he was like, well, that's, that's what he's always done. And I went, yeah, he's already doing that. Why did you give him more? <laughs> and the, the full crouch down forward one, which is if the block stun, it makes it very difficult to punish in the first place. But minus 13, I don't know, gives you mad plus frames into the mix up. I don't know, man. It, I just I just don't understand why he needed it, to be honest. But also, why does he have like the best movement in the game on top of everything he has? Is great that's movement. that's one of my biggest issues with him. Yeah, he has an amazing sidestep and the best backdash. Yeah, yeah. Like mm. he's just bro, he's he's zooping across the screen like it's tag two, but it's just him. Mm. But yeah, uh, Joey. Yeah, sorry, you were. Uh, we, we cut you off <laughs> oh uh no no you're good it's the discussion is good um yeah, yeah i mean just listing off some more things i think um reina forward for two needs to be yes. like that, i don't yes. know uh exactly what to do about it oh it's um, so brain dead bro sorry, yeah. Wait, sorry which move uh, uh reina, reina forward for two. two 
Oh uh, yeah, two yeah, yeah. two things, bro. The, the, it should this, you should not be able to go in a stance on whiff because the whiff into the power crush is crazy, mm -hmm. uh, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, yeah. the for some reason for some reason they made the jab trade with the three after the, on block. I don't know why they did that. That would mm -hmm. be one 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 less frame of yes. negative on block. Like one one mm -hmm. more frame. That's all we need. Yeah, yeah. Four four two into th into Sentai three uh, <laughs> trade trades with jab right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that yeah, just one frame <laughs> makes all the difference in the mind game. There, I don't know why it trades with jab. That's that's crazy. But yeah, forward four two, as a as a block punish is really good. As a as you know, yeah, block punish with punish. And just in general, if you play arena, they're just going to be throwing out forward four twos, man. And it's just a it's a difficult time, man. It's a bit too easy. I know with with Reina, it kind of felt like she is a mix between Amishima and and Lydia, but then just way stronger, like. Uh, she has obviously a lot of strings and that is something that can be very difficult to play against. And that, if you look at uh, the three new characters, Victor, Azusa, and Reyna, Victor actually, uh, you know, his, this is one thing I want to talk about. His his um, counterplay seems to be quite, not I wouldn't say obvious, but it's there. You know, he has a clear weakness. You know, his tracking isn't the best. And, um, you know, maybe his lows are are quite risky in, in kind of like Lars, right? In, in a way, mm -hmm. back in the yes. older games. Whereas you look at Azacena and you look at you look at Reyna and the weaknesses are not obvious. And plus there's so many strings and stances to look out for that um, labbing against the character and just trying to understand how to play against her can be very difficult, right? For e for even the pro players, but I think intermediates and new players are going to really struggle, right? So um, I always thought that those type of characters were, were, were difficult for people. Even Huarang, I mean, speak as your Huarang player. That character, mm -hmm. oh, whenever I've asked, hey, what, what anti-tutorial do you want next? The, the, the most answers I get will, will, will be on Huarang, you know, mm -hmm. that is because they just don't understand it when it comes to the strings, the stances. And they've kind of done that with uh, with Reyna. I think that Reyna's design is cool, you know, but and, and everything. Same with other center, to be honest. But yeah, there's, they seem to be, it's not it's not overly obvious how to play against them. Although you did say that you you you, you think that as a center, you have the clear way to play against her. But I mean, I, I think it's I difficult. Think I think you have a clear way to like, you know, fight her, but I think it still sucks. I don't think it's like a weakness, right? It's not it's not like if you do this against Azucena, you'll win. It's where it's like if you, you fight Azucena and you you hold the you hold the mix, it's still a struggle to just, you know, dumb. She's can I, here can, can She's I talk about just dumb. one one specific scenario that I've mentioned before? Mm -hmm. So in Tekken, you have these these moves like the Mishima. Mishima down forward one one. It's a high, you mm -hmm. duck, you punish. Mission and it's but it's safe on block. Down forward one, two, minus thirteen. You block the mid, you punish, and and you know, you have this kind of mix up situation going on from down forward one. With Azusena, you have down forward one four, which jails. Arslan said it should be minus ten, I agree. But down forward one one four into a, a high count hit launcher and a mid that's minus eleven or something. Mm -hmm. That's ten, tip I think. ten or eleven, yeah. I um you know, another thing I don't like here, everyone talks about Azucena's jailing down forward one four, but no one talks about Nina's jailing down forward one two. <laughs> Why doesn't no one talk about that? No, I, 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 try that, to, right? yeah. I try to. They don't listen. Yeah, we'll we'll yeah. no, we'll the same thing from Tekken 3. No? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, like, why are you having a problem right now? Like, it no, has I, been... I it doesn't do anything. You, <laughs> no. All right, let me give it a time. Sorry. So you have I think that's his personal issue with Nina. That's not <laughs> you have down forward one four into a high count net launcher, a mid that's punishable. And and I, if there was just that, I'd be okay. The fact that you can go into lib stance from the down forward one four adds another element to that mix up, which from a down forward one is kind of crazy. And Ty just said it in the chat as well. So with, when it comes to down forward one with Reyna, you have the, the classic down forward one, one, the, the you know, mid high, duck it like the mission was down forward one, two, you punish it normally, but she can go into Sentai from down forward one, two uh, as, as well, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and that adds this whole new element to it. Now, what that has ended up creating, what uh, a lot of people have been saying as well, is that it's kind of like this, mi this can mix up situation, for, you know, and being able to access it from a 13 frame, you know, mid, like down forward one, it seems kind of crazy. I don't know what you guys think about that. I mean, Akuma, Joey, do you agree with, with that? That's a, maybe a bit too much or are you are you actually okay with that, uh, Joey? It feels like the Fakum Ram design of just like, if, if you can get him to block the first hit of a string, like you can get him to, to guess on all sorts of bullshit. And uh, I think a lot of Tekken players were not a fan of that type of thing. And no. I think it's just that that similar direction that it doesn't doesn't feel good to be the defender. Um, like you don't feel like you're getting a fair 
a fair like risk reward i guess <laughs> like it's just overwhelming overwhelming your whole mental stack trying to defend against all that stuff mm. akuma uh yeah it's just you shouldn't be just from a poke for free no resource no nothing just you guess after it that that hard like because guessing between like a I'm high in. and a mid yeah. like just you know let's say brian down for two one down for two three whatever that's fine but going into a stance not going into a stance like every everything's a counter hit option like it's just it, it's a bit much it's a bit much not uh, not necessarily a fan of that yeah oh. it, it comes back to that idea of like you know offense is easier to apply than than good defense um so when they start pushing things too hard in that direction where you just get access to so much firepower like off of a string um the defender like starts to feel like they're at a disadvantage not necessarily because the risk reward on guessing right is so bad but just because they have to keep track of so many things and make the dis the decision so fast that it just starts to feel really bad Mm. Yeah, like in the case mm. of Reyna, I think what you get after the down forward one, none of it's really that bad, but it's it's messed up that you have to guess at that moment on that with that many possibilities. Mm. Right, right. Yeah. In the case in the case of Azucena, the, the, the counter launcher after it is a problem. Mm. But yeah, it's just it does it doesn't feel good to play against. Do you, do you agree with that uh, speed? Like in t the fact that you have this this you know a down forward one and being able to access three four different options from it you know uh leading to this kind of situation where just a down forward one on its own will create will create this mental frame where it just ends up yeah. being plus on block in a lot of people's heads you know like what do you think yeah 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 uh, that kind of that kind of mental pressure like for the advantage is like what huarang is all about right so it's, it's funny that you brought you branched in that character yeah. before it's, it's like it's like i'm doing a huarang mix up with rain a down forward one um <laughs> which is which is insane already but normally, my advice to people struggling with that, I would be like, okay, well, don't get put in a situation about the down for one. It's a close range move, right? But the problem is, it's on don't the character it's on, right? Like, it's on Reyna. So the Reyna is a character where she's got, like, these, you know, she's got, like, the Lydia 442, which you, you know, the main thing we used to do when a Lydia player was 442 happy, we just wait and block it, right? It's really hard to get around in neutral. It's really hard to contest, right? Um, so there's a character based upon, like, Lydia, who made you block, and Heihachi, who literally we just say, yo, just just block and look for the low, right? Um, you you sit there and you get beat up and you're you're blocking against her, and then she's throwing all of these mixes at you. She makes you block a down forward one, and you have to hold all of this stuff. Or she makes you block a uh, she 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 does a wave dash, and you have to hold this mix up. And she's one of the few characters like in the game where, you know, if you play a long set, you can eventually start to eliminate the guessing situations a lot in Tekken. If you play a long set against Reyna, you're guessing the whole time. It's I don't I don't know there's, there's no way to stop it it's just a bunch of guesses. Mm. Uh, yeah, Joe, some, someone in the chat oh, saying it, it yeah but it's minus three yeah but there's a high extension and a mid extension <laughs> just doing yeah. it yeah. Yeah. and she doesn't little... have to commit to to the thing downfold one nothing is a thing downfold one one is a thing downfold mm -hmm. one two is a heat engage a yeah. mid yeah. Yeah, down forward one into Sen is minus three. You want to press after that? <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. That's the whole point. Joker, you played quite a lot of Rain. Actually, I think you mentioned that you might even use her in some tournaments. I mean, what do you make of this character? Yeah. And I think she's really strong, but she's a specialist character. Like, there's a lot to her. There's a lot of depth to her. I think one thing I really can't stand about these. Reina players is when they say she has bad lows. When a character has breakable <laughs> throws, right? Like you're guaranteed gonna have to duck sometime, right? So that is technically a low if you think about it, because it's an unbreakable throw. So like she doesn't have bad lows. I think a damn back two is not even reactable at all. So I don't know, man. People just like to complain too much. Mm -hmm. And they just need to play the game, man. Literally. <laughs> it's annoying. Like people just damn play the characters for no reason. It's so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Arslan, what do you think? Uh, like Reyna, or like this this whole down forward one mixed uh, up from Azucena and stuff. Like, the first thing is, is I don't think she is that like specialist character. I think everyone everyone can play that. There are like different ways of playing her. You can play without doing wave dash, and you can still win because she has tools. Like, and everyone can do like full crouching movement and can do health sweep. You know, and so the first thing is that she's not as like specially specialist character like not like devil Jin or like a kuma or something like that uh but the other thing is um yeah i disagree and agree with the what um pete kicks and are saying like we should have he shouldn't she shouldn't have more options she should have less options maybe let's say if we were able to sidestep 
on the four four options and then what she has one option to just tackle our size step to cover the option and that should be a high or a low so we can punish that it should be like this you know it shouldn't like she has a power crush she has a low move she has a high move which is homing and then she has a grab and she has a mid move like i think it's it's overwhelming mm. yeah yeah, it, it, like that again. We're going back to this whole situation of like you, you're you're blocking a move, but you're in a mix-up situation now. And normally, um, when that situation occurs, it's from a move that's plus on block and relatively slow, right? Like, let's say I don't know a a running two from Dragonov or something, you know, which which in itself has a counterplay, right? Or a Brian back one. You block that situation. If you if you block a Brian back one, yeah, you're gonna take a mix up now because you're minus. But if it's about how easy it is to access the situation where you're putting your opponent into a mix up now from like what Joey said, you know, like the the old Fakram down forward one, it kind of feels like, you know, Reyna and, and as a center kind of have that and i don't maybe other characters do as well but i think just that concept in itself is a bit crazy like you know um uh, forcing your opponent into a into a mix-up just by them blocking a 13 frame mid or a forward four two which is like you know half screen four four two from reina uh you watch any reina play and it's you want to talk about mindless <laughs> offense that's the, that's mindless yeah, offense yeah you know? that's that's the that's the that's the my number one mindless offense character i'm i won't lie to you because there's no neutral there's no thought that you don't have it's not like you have to make someone block a running move even the mm -hmm. 4 2 is like covers everything delay timing if, so, if someone's trying to sidestep in neutral just adjust your timing ever so slightly and you get to hit confirm into the three like it's it's so dumb you just do the 4 4 2 over and over yeah yeah so th that's that's definitely a problem but um is there I mean, other characters, we all kind of, I feel like the whole community kind of just has a, a very similar top 10, top five anyway, at least. But uh -huh. is there anything else, uh, Joey, do you, anything else that um, characters moves? So, yeah, like, um, I, we've been talking about Reyna a lot. There's there's certain characters I don't want to, like, let them off the hook, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can't, man. Nah, talk about so, it. So, yeah, I'll, I'll just, I'll rattle off a few things. Um, I guess, so my idea is, like, if the design philosophy of the game is like around making certain things easier and making like certain solutions more intuitive. So like as examples, you know, they show like you, you throw them out of the power crush, the game does this whole like shing, like, and it, it lights mm -hmm. up and like, oh, you know that you shut down their power crush. And you're, like you're taking the game in this direction where certain punishes are more intuitive. Moves like uh, Fang's full crouch down forward 4-1 seem to me like not good for the design because even like high level players are struggling to like find the right duck timing and capitalize before the second hit recovers. Um, moves like that, like it should be easier to punish when you guess right. Um, yeah. So I mean, it's staggered before. It was fine that way. Yeah. I don't know right. who's, yeah. who it's like a new idea move it was to make it not staggered, bro. It's crazy. It was Jamba's idea. Yeah, it was Jamba's idea. <laughs> and and you don't have to commit. And you don't have to commit to the second hit, which like so that move. I I think the design is bad. That's my reasoning. Like why they need to change that. Something like uh, Ling's hypnotist mix up. You got this like super heavy hitting low. Like intuitively, you block that. If like you're a newer player, you'd be thinking like this must be pretty punishable. But no, it's not. It's Myself. actually very safe, and it's <laughs> it does a ton of damage. And it's very safe. Um, oh, but yeah. you gotta charge it, they say. <laughs> um, Link's not good. I, Only Europe struggles against Link. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <Exactly>. obviously. <laughs> there's, there's that stuff. Too. Just, just a couple others. Um, not, not for the same reason. But I, I think King's forward, forward, neutral two is a problem, just for how safe it is and how much, how much it does. And they made given it his, safer. His pro game, crush faster. Yeah. Have better like they they buffed it in every way they could think of. Like yeah. it's so it's dumb. ridiculous, ridiculous. And then um, I could go on, but but last thing like um, something I think is actually quite bad for the game is Asuka's rage art. Mm. Oh my um, god! Mm. Yes, I think, I think this is I think this is really terrible for the game. Uh, sorry, hold on, let me turn this off real quick. Yeah. Um. I think it's bad for the game because it just breaks this like very important system pattern where like newer mm -hmm. players are going to come to the game and they're going to feel like I block I block a rage art um I block a rage art and it should be punishable. And now you introduce this like chargeable rage art that I see new players they're like what the hell is this what do I do? And super experienced players I see encountering it like 
what the hell do I do? Yeah. <laughs> and to have to explain to like a newer player or an intermediate player, uh, especially like with all the coaching I do, I'm like, uh, yeah, you know, there's this like, you can like sidestep left block um, to like make the full charge with, but then if they do like an intermediate charge, you still have to be ready to block and punish. But if they do the rage art right away, it's just going to hit you trying to sidestep. This is absurd. Like, why is yeah. this shit in the game? It's so obnoxious. Um, it's it's just really bad design. I don't think um, I don't think it should exist. Period. Honestly. Um, mm. So that's that's my little list of uh, some things to to reflect on. Yeah. I think we should also speak of actually Heen's slide mix, man. I think no one's talking about that as well. Talk about it. What, what's wrong with the mix? Like he has the slide mix, and then he has the. Is it the safe mid? Full like, two. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like. What is that? What about, bro? <laughs> saying, right? It was flat as well. Amazing. Yeah, th that that's that's crazy to me. That the, the mid option is a knockdown wall splat and it's safe on block. Um, probably has decent tracking as well. Um, yeah, <clears throat> I also saw in the chat as um King. I mean, we know King, obviously, you see, <laughs> but there's two things in particular that I think are just too crazy when it comes to King. Um, down four two one, and I actually made a tweet about this where I said that. Counter hits in general have been nerfed. We actually didn't speak about counter hits because I know what all you guys are going to say, you know, when it comes to counter hits. Um, look, uh, Magic 4s, yeah, they were super, super strong. I'm not so um, sad that they're gone now, even though I used to enjoy using them. It makes sense, you know, um, but you, some characters still get some decent stuff. Jun gets Magic 4 and 50 plus 4. Other people get other follow-ups, whatever. But um, down 4 2 1 is a hit confirmable 13 frame counter hit launcher, and it's crazy, man. It's it's so it's the fact that King kept his counter hit launcher like that is I don't think it's okay for especially for a grappler. You're trying to make this a grappler character, but he has the best counter in the game. Not only that, but his forward forward neutral 2 is minus 13 now. I, I when I found that out, I was just I was gobsmacked. I genuinely really do not know why it's not at least minus 14 with the amount of damage it does as well. I don't know, does anyone actually agree here with that being minus 13 or oh, down no. 4 2 1. It, that move no. is insane. They yeah. buff insane. they buff throws as a mechanic and then they say, Yeah, by the way, let's buff King's low. Yeah. yeah. They buff both his lows. Yeah, forward for neutral yeah. two and down back three safer. Not as big as yeah, but yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Forward for neutral two, like it the what that accomplishes for him, like having all the properties that it does of like long range, high crush, get in their face at, at plus seven, is that right? Mm. Um counter hit. Counter, counter hit like 55 damage insane but it also it plays into like his base mind game which is like hit them get a little bit of plus frames and now you're threatening the throw so mm -hmm. you can't sidestep away from the throw anymore um so the idea is like you either got to stand there and break it or you got to duck and try to launch it now if they do like one two forward forward neutral two the forward forward neutral two is on such a timing that well it's going to hit them if they just stand there and block but if they try to like twitch duck into their wall standing, it's going to counter hit them out of their wall standing when they anticipate the throw. So the, the tracking throws combined with how good that low is, and you're not even going to get good reward if you block it. These are all the things that like add together and make the character so insane. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's way too much. And when it, when it comes down to it though, right? I mean, we can we can go. We could talk for hours about yeah, yeah, about yeah. all the different characters and how and how strong every character has something that's just a bit too crazy, right? Um, what do you guys want to see then when it comes to the future? If, if let's say, for example, you had Ban and Amco right in front of you and you were going to talk to them um, about about the balance of the game, about the characters, because remember, Evo Japan is literally next month. This time next month, it actually starts on the twenty seventh, so less than a month away now is Evo Japan. I got no idea who's gonna win. I, I all I'm hearing is that people are like, "Man, if the game is like the way it is now, next month is this gonna be crazy?" I mean, I'm hoping to go there to to watch. I missed that on on sign up, but I'm gonna I'm gonna enjoy watching. I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna be crazy. But um, I think the competitive players are gonna be very scared. What would you guys yeah. say, you know, when it comes to, uh, regarding the balance of the game, with that w regarding what to do with the characters to the developers? If you had the opportunity to talk to them, speak because I'll, I'll I'll start with you first. What's the general kind of thing you're going to be saying to them? Um, you know, uh, you probably shouldn't start with me. I'm a casual. Bro. I personally, <laughs> I if I don't really care at, at this point about the balance, right? <laughs> so like if they so if Evo Japan is crazy, it's going to be crazy. Um, personally, I just want 
Fang and Dragon of, and probably Azul Senna Touch. As a spectator, I don't like watching Azul Senna in tournament. Mm. Um, we're gonna see. We're going to see a lot of her in tournament. It puts me to sleep. If I'm restreaming a tournament with my with my my stream chat, and I'm watching, I'm doing match analysis, and it's Azul Senna. It is so boring. It's like not even, like the the mind game isn't that deep. It's just it's just it's just too good. So I want the, I would like those characters touched. But aside from that, I'm. I would long for the ride, you know? <laughs> uh, Joey. So, like I was just doing, I would I would kind of have my list of, like, very specific moves, and I would provide my justifications for why, why I think they're overpowered, but not just overpowered, but, like, bad for... bad for the game, like, bad for what they want to accomplish in, like, having a healthy competitive ecosystem, but also just having, like, a healthy environment for... For casual players and newer learners, you shouldn't have things that are just like so difficult to apply, like a basic counterplay or some option where there's hardly any counterplay at all. Um, and so, like those moves that I was mentioning, like Jin down two or Asuka's Rage Art, and um, just these types of moves, I would just kind of systematically go through. Here's why I think these are way too much, and you know, you should you should make some tweaks. That um, I think I already went through a lot of what my uh, my mindset, my attitude about it is, so. Mm. Okay. Uh, Akuma? I mean, it's pretty similar to Joey. Just there's some things that go against the design that we were told was the game and what we can see throughout most of the game and some things just go against it. Mm. Like, oh, we're nerfing counter hits because uh, we don't want just safe counter hits to to be too easy to get. And then King gets down for a two one, right? Yeah. And Nina gets all of her moves, right? <laughs> like it doesn't it goes against what they said their vision was and what the vision seems to be for most characters. Mm. Okay. So like like uh, Joey said, it's kinda like for the health of the game, like these moves they they go against what it's supposed to be like. Mm. Okay. Right? So brings the uh, bring everyone in line on the vision that was brought and i think the vision that we were promised is very promising and mm -hmm. when it is applied is very fun yeah. like we were saying earlier mid tier against mid tier is very fun but uh, even high tier just high tier against high tier not necessarily mid tier but yeah so yeah bring bring everyone in line that way i know there's always this philosophy of uh buffs over nerfs but this oh, is man. the very early beginnings of the game we need the nerfs maybe buff everyone afterwards but first <laughs> it's like yes. we don't want everyone to be as strong as dragonov we we need that fixed right so, so, your, go that so your general principle is the same like instead of buffing everyone to be up in line with dragonov let's nerf everyone to be in line with like you know just just be a bit weaker is that because of the mechanics of the game is that what you're saying um Kinda, yeah, but basically the the median level uh, of the game is fine, but the upper echelon needs to be taken down a notch. It's fine if there's characters that are stronger than others, like I was saying earlier. Yeah, Lily being as strong as she is, she's super strong. But if that's that's the top tier, like if she was the best in the game, I wouldn't have that much of a problem with. That was as high as it gets, basically. But okay. this character does so much better than that, and she already does a lot, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. There's obviously supposed to be imbalance because imbalance creates fun in a way, mm -hmm. right? But you know, not too much imbalance. Some okay. things need to be fixed, and like I said, it's a lot of things. It's towards the vision of the game, which needs to be brought back to yo. You said you were gonna do that. Actually, do it and apply it to everyone. And some things just need fixing, and that's it. Okay, uh, Arslan. Like, if let's say you you had an opportunity now just to speak directly to the developers about this game, ab like about the balance or whatever. What what are you gonna say to them? I think the first thing I would say to them is to bring me in their balancing team. I think. <laughs> bring me <laughs> <in. laughs> <Bring Nii laughs> to the balancing team. Bring me and bring back the stage select rule. Cool idea. <laughs> I mean, all his tweets are about like complaints, but I I like it. But like, besides that, uh, I think the first thing that I would say or suggest is 
to nerf heat in general uh, because and as as i mentioned before like heat uh burst should be minus and most of them we agreed on this and then the heat smash i don't like the idea where in case of dragon of we are throwing heat smash and then again even the heat smash is so fast you know and then after blocking heat smashes we are still have to block one more 50 50 and it's also taking chip damage and then the heat smash is also breaking walls sometimes floors as well so i am against this idea like uh, so this this will be my uh, second suggestion like we shouldn't be able to block another mix up after 13 14 15 frame heat smashes in case of azucena which is anti high so so that this is the second thing and the third thing is like yeah there should be some buffs and nerfs as well but like overall the system the mechanic needs to be like toned down uh this would be my suggestion and then give nina down three four back the two lows why they remove this and then one four three back <laughs> i think uh, yeah that's this is my thing yeah that's what oh. nina needs oh, yeah. more the, moves the heat smash <laughs> the heat smash thing reminds me of the momo dog tweet where he said that heat smashes should not finish on whiff i agree with that entirely I mm-hmm. think if you make yeah. the first part of a heat smash whiff, that that should be it. They should be stuck in a whiff animation, like whiff recovery. That's it. Yeah. Yes, yeah. please. I've been hit too many times by Law whiffing the first hit of his heat smash. Jin, <laughs> like, Jin heat smash. Jin, oh my god. Jin heat smash is obnoxious. It has like slight tracking on the other hits too. Like, yeah, that's yeah. A, and just and drag it off. Just oh, I'm just gonna run to the other side of the screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's one thing I notice as well. Sometimes I don't know if it's a Tekken eight thing. It's just like when I sidestep certain moves, and they just run away from you. It's, just, it's like really difficult. <laughs> and what, what before I forget as well, I think someone was saying that in the start of a round in Tekken eight, you can't buffer an input or something. Is that true? That you can't. There's a buffering issue uh, in the start uh, of the round. It wasn't no, like that in no, you c- you couldn't ever b- do buffer. That's mm. what it was. Not not buffer. Sorry, but yeah. like it's no. Basically, yeah, but, you miss you miss out on 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 your input sometimes at the start of the round. And but, but was... here's what's changed. You see the the graphic that says like round one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It disappears at a different point. <laughs> your inputs <laughs> don't get <laughs> registered the same time they used to. So you're still pressing on what you think is the right time. Okay. But yeah. the right time oh. is actually it's slightly later. Yeah. So what is and the time? Oh. It, it's sl- slightly after it disappears that your inputs get registered. Whereas before it was like immediately, some, something like that, right? Why? And <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, and, and apparently in previous Tekken's, it was closer to Tekken 7. It's just in this game, the animation they chose disappears too quickly. I, I don't know. I always... I always wish that, like they would have just a little Mario Kart light, and just the <laughs> red, <laughs> yellow, Jeez. green. Yeah. Oh, no, you can attack now. You know, no, I can little, attack. Little yeah, timing mini game. Yeah, because there's been so many buddy. times where I start the round and all I get is just a little tiny move because I want to go for a low, but I'm, all I end up doing is a quick twitch duck. I'm like, damn it. The amount of times I got counter hit because I do down four my twelve frame low, and I get sidestep into standing four, and I just die because oh, yeah. of it. Ah, oh, crazy. Joker, uh, if you had the opportunity to talk to developers, what would you say regarding the balance of the game um, and what we've been talking about today? It's like what everyone spoke about. I think some moves have too many properties. Like we spoke about heat bursts. We spoke about heat smashes being like 2 plus and having to guess after it. Again, with heat dash, I think definitely needs to be changed, I think. Mm. Like being that plus and then having to guess again is yeah. just kind of crazy. I think the mechanics overall, like, bro, wall blast, low blast, what else blast, bro? Like, what are they going to add in the later on? There's just too many things I need looking at. But again, guys, it's early days. We need to see the ceiling <laughs> glass. You see, we're joking, joking, trying to be political, bro. This, this doesn't work, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, like overall, yeah, I think some moves, certain moves, like Joey said, have too many properties <laughs> that definitely need looking at. But yeah, I'm sure with time, shit will get nerfed, and we'll be playing some proper Tekken soon. Yeah, okay. God willing, <laughs> God willing, man. Yeah. All right, uh, well, I guess before we close up here on the on the podcast, I uh, want to let you guys know that. Uh, Tomorrow, there will be the uh, Tekken Talk. Actually, I'll say it's tomorrow. It's 4 p.m. Uh, it's Japan today. time. So it's, it's actually soon, right? What time is it in Japan right now? Let's let me look. Uh, I think it's 10 a.m. in Europe. It's Yeah, so it's it's 8 a.m. in Japan at the moment, and it starts at 4 p.m. 
So this Tekken Guys, talk will be happening let's soon. Imagine if in the Tekken talk we have me with the developers. <laughs> My wish. <laughs> me, me on hopefully me will be uh hired to be on the balancing yeah, team. You need to be hired. <laughs> uh yeah. Uh, with, with uh Harada. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Arslan, why don't you get on the uh balancing team? No, I'm not that good, you know. I'm not I I would be very uh biased with a lot of things, that's why I don't want to basically forget. state slip rule. Yeah, I want <laughs> Infinity stays back. Trust me. <laughs> I want the you know, bad guy should be back and Infinity stages to be back, but I know that they don't want to. That Arslan wants uh, Infinite stages and uh, and Zafina uh, backdash. Who would have thought, man? Who would have thought? Uh, but yeah, is there anything else we want to say about second eight? Or I mean, are we done? I know there's so much to talk about. Man. You hmm? gotta hire the panel. We're we're the balancing team. That's what they should. We're do. the balancing team. We're the balancing team. Yeah. Not the new blast mechanic as well. G give give me a job on the balancing team. If I'm paid, I'll quit com competition. Okay. I'll do it. No, I'm easily bought. We, minimum we wage. We don't want another Akuma, man. Uh, but yeah, Speed Kicks, Joey, Super Kuma, Arslan, and Joker. Thank you very much for uh, joining me here for this uh, for the first. Uh, episode of this podcast, the Heat Speak. Hopefully, we'll be doing it uh, quite often. I don't know how often I'm going to do it, but um, you know, hopefully, maybe make it a weekly thing, bi-weekly. Who knows? Eventually, move it to offline as well, so we can do some nice, uh, have some nice discussions. But um, this was good, man. I think the uh, the general uh, consensus from all of us, uh, like honestly, I didn't know what you guys thought about the game until uh, I, you know, I got you on here. I knew kind of just generally. A little bit what you guys thought about it but what it seems like we we want to see just a, a little bit of a tone down with uh like some of the mechanics like chip damage and, and heat dash and this kind of stuff we want a big um tone down with the characters and i think once once that happens having now played the game for a couple of months it's gonna probably be the best tekken like that we've played i mean it really does seem a fun game and then when you when you yeah. play uh that mid mid tier characters against each other in this game already with with how the mechanics are it just seems really fun man but um i think we're in a good position man what do you guys think we're in a good position right mm -hmm. yeah let's stay optimistic enough yeah, doing it's really fun yeah stay positive negative thoughts bring negative actions <laughs> negative <laughs> thoughts <laughs> Being negative actions, uh, uh, good stuff from Philosopher Joker there, guys. Um, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, <laughs> thank you very much for joining uh, us here for the Heat Speak podcast. Um, make sure you drop one. And this will be on. You guys uh, were asking. This will be on YouTube as well. I want to upload it uh, shortly after this. And uh, we did get a message in in the uh, in the chat as well from Sultan saying that the esports World Cup is happening too. That is something that I'll speak about for the next uh, the next. Uh, podcast but yeah of course game is eight is back for tekken bro so this is gonna be it's gonna be fun man but uh guys thank you very much for for joining me speaker joey uh akuma uh, arsan joker and everyone in the chat for for tuning in as well we're just hitting up to three hours on this one it's been a long one man uh Good so stuff, i appreciate it. i'll let you guys go man thank you very much guys i'll see you soon man peace bye, -bye. bye. see you soon bye, -bye.